Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome uh, to Fed React. So sorry for the delay, man. We got a lot to talk about. We're going to be talking about Michael Jackson Part 2. Let's get into it. Our special agent with Homeland Security Investigations, okay, guys? HSI. This is what Fed Reacts covers. Defendant Jeffrey Williams and Associate YSL did commit the felony. So here's what 6 9 actually got. Magatier conspiracy. This attack shifted the whole U.S. government. This guy got arrested. Espionage, okay? Trading secrets with the Russians. John Wayne Gacy, a.k.a. the killer clown, okay? One of the most prolific serial killers of all time. Killed 33 people. Zodiac Killer is a pseudonym of an unidentified serial killer who operated in Northern California. All these serial killers, guys, they really get off on getting attention from the media. Many years, Jeffrey Epstein sexually exploited and abused dozens of minor girls at his home. It was OJ working together to get Nicole killed. We're gonna go over his past, the gang ties, so that this all makes sense. All right, we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome uh, to Fed Reacts, man. Uh, looks like the channel's a bit shadow banned. Um, I know you guys are probably wondering, hey, where's Angie? Um, she's not feeling too good, guys. Um, her brother came to visit her. And uh, I think she went out to go eat somewhere and she got sick. So I told her, hey, just stay home uh, versus infecting me with her c -vart. No, I'm just kidding. <gasps> uh, no, no, she's uh, she's home right now, guys. She wanted to actually come in and do this one because you guys know she's a big fan of Michael Jackson. And she's been waiting to do this for a while, but she's not feeling too good. So I told her, hey, just stay home. Um, you know, so it is what it is. Um, what else here do we got? Um, Bills, Mo, introduce yourself to the people, man. Mo, you want to go first? I go first. Yo, what's going on? This is Big Mo. Best in the world, baby. Hope you guys enjoy the show. I'm looking forward to this. and We knew there was going to be a part two, so I'm going to be enjoying it with you guys. And you guys can follow me at Big Mo underscore B-I-T-W. That is B-I-G-M-O underscore B-I-T-W. Don't forget the memo to believe in Big Mo because that is the M-O. Hey, what's going on, y'all? You guys know me as Jay Bills. I'm a musician. I'm happy to be here for the part two of the Michael Jackson case for Fed Reacts. Thank you guys for all the comment and the love that you guys have been sharing. Um, also want to say follow me on Instagram, right at jbills. Um, it is at J-B-I-L-Z. Please go ahead and keep putting W Blitz in the chat, W Bills in the chat. I, I appreciate all the love. And yeah, let's get into the Fed Reacts. Cool. Uh, so guys, uh, last week we covered uh, Michael Jackson and we covered uh, basically like his um, rise to fame. We went over the Jackson 5, we went over um, his strict father, um, how he pretty much trained him his entire life to be an entertainer and how he really didn't have a childhood. We went over the issues that he had with his brothers um, and uh, we pretty much stopped short just of the criminal investigation, which, um, excuse me, um, which we didn't end up covering on that episode. Last week's episode was more about getting you guys uh, familiar with who Michael Jackson was, his background, his story, etc. Because a lot of you guys that watch, excuse me, um, I just came from the gym, guys. I apologize for that. A lot of you guys that watch might be younger, might not know or no understand the influence that this guy had back in the day. Um, we had, you know, a pretty good discussion last time about how I think, you know, he was truly famous. Um, in every sense of the word, you know, nowadays people think, you know, you're famous because you got a couple hundred thousand followers on Instagram. No, this guy was famous for real. You know, I'm talking about having sold out stadiums of people in foreign countries that don't even speak English. I mean, that's a whole other realm of fame. You know, people are saying, oh, well, you know, a Beyonce Knowles or maybe a uh, Shakira or something like that might be comparable. I would argue that they don't even come close. Um, Beyonce won some more, if I'm not mistaken, Bill, uh, uh, Bill's Mo, she, she won some more Grammys, but I think that was a more political thing because, uh, she obviously, you know, Michael Jackson dealt with some legal stuff that I think hurt him a, a bit as far as like winning more Grammys. But, uh, I think as far as like musical influence, fame, uh, Michael Jackson was by far probably in a top three for, for most famous people of all time. I, I wholeheartedly you, uh, agree. 100% agree. 100% agree. Yeah. Grammys is extremely notorious for um, doing stuff like that where they'll give people Grammys for political reasons. Mm. Who Name an artist you guys could think of that got a bunch of Grammys that don't deserve them. Um, the first thing was Macklemore. He was actually the <laughs> artist that exposed it. Uh, Even though it was one Grammy, yeah. but um, that was the year we talked about last time where Kendrick Lamar was, his album was clearly the way better rap album, but they gave it to Macklemore because... Uh, his, what song did he release that? It, it, that? it was Same Love. Same Love. Same Love. It was very pro, uh, ow, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pro Zest. Yeah. What, 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 how did that song go? Um, no Freedom Till We Equal, Damn Right I Support It. 
That was like the main line. The fuck, I don't even remember that. Yet. I don't even remember that. Bro. I don't even remember like, <laughs> I, cause it, I was actually one of the guys that was like salty about Kendrick Lamar not winning that album. And the fact that uh, Macklemore had won that album for that kind of reason, I was like, it didn't sit right with me. I was very salty. It, it was one of the most robbed um, Grammy Awards I've ever seen. Mm. Did y'all see the, uh, the fight between Dylan Dennis and Logan Paul? Um, I didn't. I was actually at the CME. Oh, you were uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, was at, I unfortunately didn't. It was pretty good. I, I enjoyed it, you know. Shout out to Adam Sharp yeah, the CME, big up to, You know, I, I, I took it for what it was meant to be, to, to sit, listen, learn, um, hear perspectives, um, take notes. That, and that's, what, that's what it was all about for me, and that's what I used it for. So big up to Donovan Sharp. Yeah, shout out to Donovan running another successful uh, event, you know, the Conference of Masculine Excellence. Um, I was not feeling too good, so I, I, I stood inside, bro. I didn't do anything. I, a matter of fact, the only thing I did this entire weekend, which is what I usually do on weekends, is just go to the gym and film this for y'all, man. So I apologize for the delay. Uh, Mo had some things he had to handle right before the show. Um, and, uh, you know, we were, you know, getting things going. I actually got a couple contractors here in the studio right now working on some stuff. We still got some upgrades coming as well, which I'll definitely share some of those upgrade with you, upgrades with you guys when they're done. I think you guys will really enjoy it. But, man, we're really working on making this thing the best studio in the world, best podcast studio in the world. You guys can see the camera angles. I just bought some new cameras as well. Got some more of those Cinema Line uh, cameras coming in. Uh, a lot of you guys like those angle, uh, like those cameras. So I think you know it's time to upgrade this. You know the Sony A7R is over to these um, these FX3s, man. So and you can see Bill's playing around with some of the camera angles here that we got. And uh, also, I, I did want to say, um, speaking of the Dylan Dennis and Logan Paul, I was even if I had the free time, I didn't care to watch it anyway. One, I knew Logan was gonna win, regardless. But Logan already lost every. He lost. Before the fight started, long before the fight started. So as it, far as uh, it, as far as the chick goes, yeah, he he he. he what, once once Twitter was a thing, Twitter alone was already just it was an L. It was over with, like it was done. Cause I'm like, bro, no matter even if, cause I although I heard Dylan Dennis barely swung at all, but Dylan Dennis didn't have to lift a finger. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan Dennis won by far. Just <laughs> he won <laughs> before the fight once, started. What, yeah, he won before the fight started, bro. After after that whole Twitter debacle, yeah, it was over with. Yeah, I mean, um, definitely. Uh, as far as like you know, wifing up three hundred fours and everything else like that, that 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 was a big L. I mean. And he said he's still gonna marry her anyway. Yeah, he what? Yeah, uh, he I, hope, I hope he got a prenup, man. I really do hope he got a prenup because his net worth, even though this girl does have her own money, uh, his his net worth is way higher than hers, man. You know what I mean? And we we and especially a girl like her that you know only deals with rich guys, you know what type of time she's on, man. So hell no. Yeah. I'm I'm setting up the slider right now, uh, guys. For y'all, hold on, <laughs> bills. We we gotta flex on the haters, even yeah, when we do Fed reacts. We gotta let them know that we got superior. Um, production quality. Speaking of which, I'm going to actually turn one of the rooms in this spot to a uh, to the Fed Fed Reacts room. So that's coming very soon, guys. Don't worry. Um, uh, but but yeah, I, I saw the fight. Uh, I saw parts of it. Um, I will say this: even though Logan Paul takes an L as far as like you know, wifing up a 304, and you guys should never do that. Um, I will say this: it was good to see someone on the internet get held accountable for their actions and beat the fuck out of for talking shit. <laughs> um, you know, I think we do live in this crazy ass world nowadays where um, the whole concept of there's consequences to the things that you say is kind of like something that doesn't exist anymore. And seeing someone uh, get beat up for talking shit, uh, I think is a very good reminder that um, you gotta watch what you say, man. You, you gotta watch what you, watch what you say. And um, in this case, I knew Logan was gonna win as well because um, he, when you when you fight someone who just wants to beat you up and doesn't really care about money or clout or any of the other stuff, you're, you're it's bad. It's you're gonna you're <laughs> it's not gonna be good for you. And uh, that's what ended up happening. Uh, he used that fuel, uh, he used that hatred towards Dylan as fuel, and he used it to train and he beat the shit out of him. And I'm not surprised. Um, Sounds That's, familiar. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you on this. There's a reason why that fucking dancing loser that uh, that uh, what's the term for it? There's a there's a term. There's a biblical term for it. How'd it go again? Uh, that sodomite. There's a reason why he doesn't want to 
uh, he will never ever put on gloves and fight me. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. But th- that's fine. His, his day will come. His day will come where he will end up having to, um, you know, be held accountable for all the shit that he's talked. And he he knows it, man. He knows it. The, the, that's why there's a reason why he hasn't come to Florida for a very long time. Uh, so, yeah. Other than that, I guess we could hit some of these uh, some of these chats while I'll adjust this camera angle here. Go ahead, Bills. All right, got you. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and read some of these Rumble Rants. I see you guys are supporting. Uh, Keep sending in the Rumble Rants. And also, don't forget, FNSSuperChat.com. We will be reading everything, $10 and up. If you do send anything like $5 and up, it will show up on the screen. Um, $10 and up will show the actual message. So keep that in mind. And, yeah, let's pretty much get into the Rumble Rants. Okay. And 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 also, it's, yeah, FNSSuperChat.com. The link is literally in the pinned on the top of the comment section, on the top of the live chat. Absolutely. First, right. first one, right? You want to do this one, Myron? You ready? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Myron busy making a comeback on Halloween. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Please no. Uh, <laughs> Please no. <it's> <laughs> uh, but I do got some other costumes. Myron, do an episode on the Finders cult. Apparently, they are a satanic, saint worshiping cult that was linked to human trafficking and the CIA 1980s. Perfect topic for the Halloween season. Okay, we'll look into that. Uh, Angie's watching right now, so she could write that down. Uh, this is the hood, ain't it? Or this, this the, the hood, ain't it? This the hood, ain't it? One Marv, okay. Uh, and then we got here, one Marv again. Touch your toes, ninja. This is a stick-up mo, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then what else do we got here? All right, let's do the Streamlabs joint. The Streamlabs. Shout out to y'all, man. FNFSuperChat.com. If you guys want to go ahead and get involved in the show, you got a comment or anything you want to be seen. Uh, tick, tack, t- okay, Takato. Five bucks, appreciate that, my friend. Uh, he says... What do you say? Go ahead, Mo. I can't read. He says, "Hey, Myron, how many miles do you have on your Honda Civic? And uh, is that the only car you have? Probably like he got probably got. You know three. what, dude? I just got it fixed. I got a backup camera on it and a little bit of a sound oh system now. Oh my god! Now. What? You did I just not... got it fixed. Bro, what? It works, you put a it sound works now. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, not, like a new, like you know, the thing that you could put in that connects to your phone or whatever. What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it has a backup camera, so now I modernized it a little bit. But yeah, it has like 127 to 130 thousand miles on it. I was guessing like 300 thousand. No, 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 no. I don't drive it that much, bro. Honestly, I barely drive that thing. That's pretty good, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah, that yeah. The barely, you know, yeah. It's at the most 135k. Because I was thinking te- the your Texas days, but I never drove it because um because I had a government car. Ah, why yeah. are you keep forgetting that? I never drove it, so I, I had a take-home car. Uh, I had a couple. Uh, I always just switch out my car every now and then. But yeah, I, I had a take-home car. When you're fed, they give you a take-home. So I was using that and everything. So when I was in Texas, I didn't. I barely drove my personal car. Ah, oh, mm. a take-home car. Is that what like? Is that how cops be changing cars so often and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially feds, whether you know FBI, DEA. HSI, etc. Um, they they all get take home cars. So if you're uh, an 1811, right? Which if you search that job series code, criminal investigator, special agent, whatever it may be, um, you get a take home car. Most agencies give you a take home car. And you said HSI. I think you said they give you the best budget. Like they have to, like the best budget. Like hey, whatever you need. No, 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 no. I mean, we had a pretty good fleet. I'm not gonna lie, but um, but like if I like let's say like I would go do surveillance on a certain on on a, on a crook. I, I would switch cars out so they wouldn't know it was me. Mm. I'll switch cars out every now and then, yeah. So that's that's how I did it. So, uh, oh, three Diglets with a big one hundred dollars super chat. Shout out to you, my friend. I see you. Uh, going to be a lit show tonight. Let's fucking go, boys. Also, happy belated to the man himself, Bills. Oh wow! Thank yeah. you so much, three Diglets. <laughs> Shout out to you, three Diglets. I appreciate that, my friend. Uh, we got one more, big more. Read it. Um. Oh, no lie says. Well, he also said it in rum. On Rumble too, um, I'm 5'10", 135 pounds. I have man boobs. How do I get rid of them? Five foot ten, 135. How pounds? does he have man boobs at five ten and yeah. one thirty five? That sounds not making sense. Uh, well, I mean, he's skinny fat then. Clearly, yeah. uh, yeah, bro, you need to lift weights, my friend. That is your. That's what you need to focus on: lifting weights, resistance training. Okay, um, whether it's um, you know, bench pressing, doing push ups. Uh, what I I tell guys all the time, I think the dumbbell bench press is superior to the barbell bench press, and the reason why is because you get a better stretch, activates more muscle fibers. So I would focus on doing um, dumbbell bench presses, um, and focus on uh, progressing in that. Right, progressive overload is how you build muscle mass. So make sure that you're getting stronger over time, and you're also adopting you know habits that will help you actually build the muscle mass 
outside of the gym, right? Eating enough calories, eating enough protein, sleeping enough, you, you know, uh, consuming vegetables, you know, green leafy vegetables, eating fruits. It's amazing how people like don't talk about the importance of like getting your micronutrients in as well as your macronutrients, macronutrients, protein, f fats, carbs, and alcohol, right? The al alcohol actually is a macronutrient, but we're not going to count it. Um, and then your micronutrients, right? Your vitamin C, um, calcium, etc. All these different things are very important, guys. For your body to build muscle mass, you need to be in a optimal, uh, you, you want your body running on an optimal level. So um, think of muscle as a luxury, not necessarily a necessity. Your body doesn't look at muscle mass as a necessity. It looks at it as a luxury. So if, in order for you to be able to enjoy that luxury of building lean body mass, you need to put yourself in a position where your body is operating with all the nutrients it needs, okay? And then some extra. That's why you build muscle mass on a caloric surplus, not on a caloric deficit. You understand? So that's what you need to focus on, my friend, is uh, definitely lifting weights, resistance training. And uh, I would suggest um, if you really want to hit the chest hard, focus on dumbbell presses over barbell bench presses. I have a quick question, man. Just yeah, a sure. Second. Um, how do you feel about the incline or decline on the dumbbell presses? Uh, so really good question. Um, I would say um, – so. If you're going to do flat, decline is useless. If you're going to do decline, then flat is useless. So I would say pick one of those two, um, and then incline is like a necessity for sure. 100%. Incline is absolutely a necessity. I, w I, I would say if, if you get your um, your lower chest developed well enough, then you can pretty much ignore flat and decline altogether if your goal is like to maximize aesthetics, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to be – if you want to maximize your flat bench press, then obviously you have to work the flat bench. But – if your goal is purely aesthetics, focus on the incline bench press and then pick one of the two, whether it's flat or decline. But I wouldn't do both. It's fairly useless, fairly um, pointless. Oh, wow. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, no worries, man. When it comes to aesthetics. Yeah, you know, and honestly, I go for aesthetics more than more than actual, you know, I guess, functionality or actual power, power building, I guess. But I then dumbbells all the way. Yeah. Then dumbbells all the way. Obviously, if you're a power lifter, right, the flat bench press is going to be your, your bread and butter. I would just st stick with that, right? And I would do variations of the of the flat bench press, you know, whether it's doing the flat bench press with, uh, you know, a log on your chest so that you can, you know, max out the, you know, power, work on the finish or, you know, using bands or whatever it may be. But if you're a guy and you're just trying to look good naked uh, and maximize aesthetics, the incline bench press by far needs to be in your repertoire. And then you can include either a flat bench press variation or a decline bench press variation, but not both. Oh, that's real. That's a real good takeaway. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Absolutely, man. Uh, Z is quad goes, yo, Myron, I'm 23 in the army. Just signed my second contract a few days ago. Love FNF, but I want to know how much you charge to be a mentor tracking, tracking that it's not cheap, but I could, could I have a price? Um, see, I'm reluctant, man, to like do one-on-one -on -one consults or be a mentor because, uh, it's expensive. And my thing is I'd rather you guys, um, save that money and, you know, do other things with it. I mean, if you really want me as a mentor, that's fine, but I'd rather, um, you know, you guys save that money and or I work with a super high net worth individual where it's not going to cost them. But for you young guys, I'd rather y'all save that money, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, to put things in perspective for you, if you want like a 20 minute consult with me, I'm going to charge you a thousand dollars. And I know some of y'all might say, whoa, what the hell? Like, Byron, what? Guys, it's what I've had to do to protect my time before when I had, um, you know, my consults at a certain price. I would get overbooked and, it w and it's very... Um, I mean, for me at least, it's very mentally taxing because whenever I do a console, I get very um, involved in the situation. I take notes. I listen very intently. I give, you know, I get a very emotionally invested pause in the individual's problems, right? I kind of uh, absorb it as my uh, absorb it as my own, which is how I'm able to give the best practical advice. If I was in their shoes, I truly do step into their shoes, and you know, and you listen to some very problematic things, and. Uh, for me, right, as far as like, uh, you know, the time it would take and I would always go over, right, they'd pay for maybe an hour, I'd go an hour and a half, two hours sometimes because I just want to make sure people get the value. So what I had to do is I said, you know what, I had to increase the price uh, to protect my time so I could focus on, you know, the show, writing out new new um, ideas, new concepts, researching for Fed Reacts, etc. So that's why. So um, it's not necessarily to make money, it's more along the lines to protect my time and not necessarily um, do consults all day, which are very mentally taxing and, uh, you know, detract from, you know, being focused on the show, et cetera, and then focused on going to the gym and doing what I need to do. So that's why I did that. Um, but if you want to, you know, do that, then I guess, you know, feel free to hit me with console on, on Instagram, uh, on unplug fit. 
Uh, but understand that I might still say, no, man, I'm not going to do it, right? I've, I'll, I'll just, that's just a price, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to accept it. I, and I, you, I don't think you guys understand. When I say, like, money isn't everything to me, I truly mean that. Like, money isn't everything. My focus is on giving y'all the best content that I can, and um, and that's really what it comes down to. So if, if, it's, if a console's going to detract from my ability to do that, uh, I'd rather, you know, be alert and be on a point for the actual show then make money on the side you know that's really not my main focus here to to make money um Myron don't like his time wasted to hear the words yeah but <laughs> yeah that too uh, yeah yeah like uh, you know and, and that's fine because when I do the console I kind of give a war a few warnings in the beginning like I don't like hey I'm gonna tell you what the best thing to do is given your situation or I'm gonna refer you to another professional um or whatever it may be but yeah i really have a very low uh patience for like excuses or yo or yeah but like that friend yeah, that but. phrase like i don't give a fuck about none of that shit no you know? excuses baby yeah so I, I truly live by that like no no excuses man um what else we got here what are the updates for the jfk video also update on the war with oh man i i don't believe what they are saying on fox um <laughs> Man, y'all know where I stand with with that whole situation, man. So I'm not gonna get too much into it because we're on YouTube. But y'all know where I stand, man. You guys already know. Um, for Rumble CEO, clickable timestamps. Watch later playlist. Mini player works when off app, but not within app. Uh, vids continue where you left off an app. Adding polls one time on time. F and F streams. Uh, Mo look like a meatball with feet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's working on it, guys. And then uh, Nick Kerr, as far as your um. Your critiques, <laughs> bro. Uh, <laughs> wow, uh, I thought it was, bro. Yeah, well, it's Nick Kerr. Nick Kerr. So it's fine. Uh, just I stop, see what he did just, there. Just I, I didn't catch just, the. Yeah, I see what he just, just, means. Reading it. just stop repeating uh, it. <laughs> but yeah, bro. We we uh, we see your. Those are very um, valid, good, valid critiques that we're working on. Definitely will rumble. Uh, what do you guys think about Dylan Mulvaney winning Women of the Year award this week? Well, what I tell y'all, man, men are better than women at almost everything, including even being a woman. <laughs> uh, we got here, Byron. Right, if, if you black, then Caitlyn Jenner is a woman. It's just a joke, LMAO, but true. LOL. Okay, Goku. I guess bro, if you don't he, think I'm black. I'm not black, then. Bro, he's whatever, Sudanese, bro. brother. Y'all don't know. Stupid man. Y'all, y'all, bro, forgot, y'all don't see the way. Bro. Bro, bro, take, bro, take a yeah. day in Sudan, bro, and. <laughs> take a day take in Sudan. A day, just just take a day in Sudan. Just walk across the street for like five minutes, bro, and see if my be like, all right, I'm, yeah. maybe my he's, he's one of those, yeah, he's one of those like um, crybaby BLM people, right? Bro, who, who did bro? this dude Goku? I think he's made other like comments like this, like Myron's not black yeah. or whatever. Who, do, bro? Who do y'all think? What do y'all think Sudanese people even look like? Like, I don't know, man. where they look like European? <laughs> European blonde hair, blonde hair, blue eyes, blonde hair, blue yeah. eyes, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, man. Mo most people can't even point Sudan in a map, man. Well, North Sudan in this case. I mean, you know, at the time it was called Sudan, right? Though, but now it's North and South Sudan. But yeah, my family's from North Sudan, the Khartoum area. But yeah, man, they're Arab blacks, bro. Like How I do don't mean? know what to tell y'all, but whatever, dude. <laughs> it's just, I clearly y'all haven't seen my brother. Uh, <laughs> he's black as hell. Bro, uh, look, and look at Myron's waves, bro. Come yeah, on, man, bro. Yeah, man. What do y'all see? Man, y'all see this, man. Bro, like, look at on, the man. waves, bro. Yeah, man. I got, I got the wave spinner right now. Woo! I mean, this is some, some black activity right here. Let's go to the wave but, cam. Bro, this the hood, ain't it? <laughs> you know? Like, look, you can see it right there in the lighting, too. Like, mm. come on, man. You know? I went from uh, ball to wavy. Yeah. So, you know? But whatever, bro. Is, well, we get, bro, we getting seasick back here on God, bro. My soul. <laughs> yeah. Haters gonna hate, man. Whatever, bro. They're always gonna say some shit. Next, they're gonna say Bills is white. They're gonna say Mo is not Haitian. They're gonna, they're gonna find no, something they, to they, say, bro. They call him Fetty Wap in yeah, uh, a feature. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they call him Fetty Wap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they just called me a meatball. Eh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah they always find something to say. Uh, it's shit, all good, man. Goddamn. Thank you for thank you for rumble ranting. Uh, <laughs> broke from the smoke. Chat, get the likes up. Goddamn, appreciate that. Uh, and then uh, Z Squad, uh, yo, Myron, I'm 23 in the army. Just signed a new contract. I was wondering how much you charge for a mentor. I know it's not cheap, but it can have a price. I'm willing to pay. Love F and F. By the way, changed my life. I think that's the same guy from before, right? Yeah, but I think oh, he dude. donated it's twice. Okay, okay. I mean, he donated twice, one dollar. I mean, hey, bro, <laughs> it's not cheap, man. Well, well, I mean, uh, I mean, the last one was five. Uh, okay, <laughs> four dollar difference. Uh, oh, this is Angelica. 
Uh, hey, guys, check out the Michael Jackson Allegations Part 1 on YouTube by Carrie's. She did a great detailed breakdown. She just as an annoying accent, but it's worth the watch. Just an annoying accent? Just I'm as an dead. annoying accent as hers. She's what she's I'm producer. dying. Because people say that she has an annoying accent. <laughs> <Angela. Wow. laughs> All right. Uh, and then we got here. One Marv goes, Mo, can you please stop posting simp music on your IG stories? Thank you. I, lo I love working out to R&B sex music, bro, and, and Caribbean music and Latin music. Bro. What? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I work, I be working out to that. I be in the gym. I be like, yeah. I'm like, whoa. While like, you feel Look me? Look at Andy trying to take over bro. the show. Andy, what are you doing, man? Come hey. on, man. Get out of here, bro. <laughs> Shout out to Andy. He's in the back. Uh, here, put him on the kickout cam. Put him, on the kick kick out. put him on the kickout no, cam. No, he, he, he hide it now. <laughs> bro, so for some of you guys that are wondering, yeah, there he is right there. You guys can see it yeah. right there. Andy, look, how you look, so fat, look nigga? Behind, look behind you, Andy. Yeah, 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 oh, Andy, Andy look, this is the camera. You hook right up, there. man. Yeah. Andy, yeah. He knows where it's at too, man. Yeah. 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 Hey, shout out to my guy, Andy, man. Uh, for all you guys that are wondering, he is the one that built the studio alongside me. We built it together. Pause. Um, and he helped me put a lot of these um, ideas into real life. So if you guys like the studio, you know, you got to definitely uh, shout him out. Uh, Andy, what is it? Middle Tech Guys is your Instagram? M middle tech, middle tech don't want guys. business. Come on, bro, man. What is come it? Come on, air, bro. And say it, bro. Huh? You got too much got customers. Too much oh, 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 my excuse, oh, oh, my, oh, my God. Excuse me. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. All right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. excuse me. I'll tell you all this. He don't want to work with none of you broke niggas, man. <laughs> ah! Hey, that's facts. Hey, hey, I want, hey yo, well, could you come and mount the TV? Uh, I'll pay you uh, 50. He, he going <laughs> yeah. to say, uh, nope. No, thank you. <laughs> the fuck out of here. <laughs> and he ain't working with you OF 304s either that don't want to pay. You guys, oh, I'll give you a shout out. Fuck out of here, man. I'll give you a shout out. It's crazy. Bro, yeah, these dumb assholes really be thinking they're famous like that, bro. Nobody gives a fuck about y'all. Um, but anyway. What what was that, Andy? Yeah, he do be, he do be yeah. getting that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. chicks be trying to like, oh, I'll give you a shout out. Try to or uh, get him to or, or what? Sex? Sex? smash you. <laughs> do you take it? <laughs> do you take it? No, no. no? Oh, you want to get paid? Or, 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 you don't want. You don't care about getting laid. You want to get paid? Oh, they uh, the house probably not worth it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or, or she not bad enough? <laughs> or she not bad enough? <laughs> or she not bad enough? <laughs> do you do? You, well, hold on. Do you do you have like the same type of girl I do? The the Latina don't don't, don't speak English. Every single one. I speak English. They all speak English. Okay, yeah. They not his. They, they not his type. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah, they not his type. Andy Andy likes to. They, Andy, you down with the brown though, right? That's what you like. Wait, you dabble uh, in the dark? Oh, he dabbles everywhere. Man. That boy dabbles everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> and canceled. canceled. Oh, All right, guys. <laughs> great. Uh, I, doing I, the show with y'all, but um, I, I'm sorry, I lied. I lied to y'all in chat, bro. I, I, this, yeah, I, I, I be dabbling in the dark. I, I lying, dabble nigga? in the dark too, bro. Oh, God, dabbles bro. in everything. Listen, I don't discriminate. I collect on God. Hmm? Oh shit. <laughs> All right. Um, so we got a we got a documentary to uh, react to here, man. We're gonna play. As you guys know, we like I said, we covered uh, Michael Jackson, his background, his history, etc. So now we're gonna get into the uh, criminal portion of uh, the background. Uh, I think you got that first link ready, Bills? Um, the first link is the is like the second video we should watch, but I do have the video that we were watching before already queued up. Uh, oh, Remember, yeah. We, we were supposed to. Yeah, yeah. So let's start from there then, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Like this one, right? If I'm not mistaken? Yes. This is where we ended it off last time. Correct. Michael met Brooke Shields and eventually even considered getting married. But Shields was never thrilled about the prospect. She once said to Michael, You have me for the rest of your life. You don't need to marry me. He also had oh, a short relationship forward, with think, Madonna. I think we According were, yeah, to we her... Watch this oh, a little Madonna, bit, right? that dumb asshole. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we, we moved it. We're, what was it at? It was just there. It was just at the criminal thing. Or it's probably, the next, it's probably the next couple seconds yeah this this a shot to these guys they had or actually time actually actually let it let it play for a little bit yeah i okay. think it'll come up i think All it's right. gonna come up for in a second okay she and michael did not go beyond three dates and a kiss with the tongue according to rumors he briefly dated shana mongatel and whitney houston whom he wanted to marry quickly in august of 1993 michael's career took a turn and changed probably forever 13-year-old boy Jordan Chandler and his father Evan Chandler accused the singer of child sexual abuse. Those very first premises found their dastardly continuation. Jordan claimed that he and Michael Jackson kissed, <laughs> masturbated, and had oral sex. 
The boy's mother initially told police that she did not believe that Jackson had molested him, but after a few days, her position changed. Even Michael's older sister, LaToya, accused him of pedophilia, although she later admitted that her ex-husband forced her to say it. A few days later, police searched Michael's home and found two legal, large-format art books in which the boys played, ran, and swam in varying degrees of undress. Michael denied knowing about the contents of the books. He claimed that since they were found in the house, someone must have sent them to him, and he did not open them. Then, Jordan Chandler gave the police a description of Jackson's genitals. There was a humiliating strip search of the star, but the jury concluded that the description did not match. In January, Michael had settled out of court with the Chandlers for $23 million. By the way, Pause. the criminal case was never... So, the description was wrong, right? And then, obviously, they settled out for $23 million. I mean, tell me there wasn't a financial incentive there. Like, come on, man. Like, mm -hmm. what the hell is going on? Like, And I think we should probably uh, admit here that we're all Michael Jackson fans on this team. So, 100%. yeah, you yeah. know, so I guess you could you could go ahead and make try to make the argument. You guys are biased. But I mean, look, facts are facts. I mean, if you had really been a victim of this assault or whatever, you would have been able to describe it properly. But it didn't. Right. So did it happen? I don't know, man. I mean, you were able to you, you sued him civilly on the side as well to make 23 million. I think they already forgot that we also defended Logan Paul during his accusation era. Oh, uh, was it Logan or Jake? Or I think it was Jake. Jake got accused. Jake got accused. Yeah, we yeah. Did, yeah bro. My, my thing is, man, anytime people try to meet too, I'm always skeptical nowadays, especially when it's someone that's um, famous or has money. Because, like, I remember the girl that made the accusation against Jake. Like, she had a, a heavily edited video with a bunch of jump cuts. And it's like, dude, what the hell? And then, and then well, where's she at now? No, nowhere to be nowhere seen. Nowhere to be found. Like, dude, like it's it's crazy to me how um people will say and do anything to be famous nowadays, bro. Like, you know, Offset said it best, man. People do anything for clout, and it's it's real, bro. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. literally real. It's it's a very scary time to be uh, a celebrity or have some type of money or some type of status, right? You got to damn near record everything you do. You need to make sex tapes with these bitches to prove that you're not, uh, you know, uh, a, a criminal. It's wild, bro. It's wild. So. It is what it is. Uh, that's why I'm a porn star. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> what? No, I'm just kidding. Hey, yo. Oh, hey. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. W uh, Mo Soundboard. Yeah, so, well, as you guys could tell uh, easily, the Mo has a sound effect board now. <laughs> He's having too much fun with it. All right. And, uh, we, and we gave him Myron Soundboard. I yeah. Think. He basically stole all my sound effects. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> that's all I'll say. <laughs> all right. Let's go back to it were initiated due to the lack of evidence other than Jordan's testimony. There have been many disgusting statements made recently concerning allegations of improper conduct on my part. These statements about me are totally false. As I have maintained from the very beginning, I am hoping for a speedy end to this horrifying, horrifying experience to which I have been subjected. Michael had become dependent on painkillers, which he took during reconstructive surgeries on his scalp after an injury. He started again taking pills to cope with the stress of the sexual assault allegations that had piled up. In the fall of 1993, he canceled the remainder of the Dangerous Tour due to health problems, stress, and dependence on painkillers. By the end of the year, Michael was already tired of a failed relationship and really wanted to start a family. Therefore, the singer proposed to Lisa Marie Presley, daughter of Elvis Presley, by phone. Michael met Lisa when he was 16 and she was 6. They grew up, and after a private dinner in Los Angeles in 1992, their relationship began. They talked on the phone every day for a year. The couple married on May 26, 1994 in La Vega, Dominican Republic. It was Michael's first marriage, Plus. but unfortunately, it did not last long. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, doesn't the Dominican Republic have some type of law in play where you can uh, divorce someone without their knowledge? Yep. Any? Yep. Is that is is that what Mike did? You think? Hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the DR. I, someone look it up, but I'm almost certain they have some kind of law in play where you're able to marry someone there and then divorce them without their knowledge. I remember. I remember um, a story or article about that. Yeah. Uh, now I'm speculating, is that his reason? Okay, interesting. Mm. Interesting, interesting. All right, let's keep going. 
it's a tin foil hat. The marriage was not just a secret for many weeks, but some facts about their union were pretty amazing. For example, they slept in separate bedrooms despite their on-screen chemistry. The 1994 MTV Video Music Awards are remembered for their marriage. They didn't hesitate to hold hands and kiss in front of 250 million people watching on TV. The kiss seen worldwide led Lisa Marie to believe that Michael used her to make their kiss a reason for talk for decades. Lisa Marie did not agree to have children with him because he was emotionally immature. They divorced a year and a half later due to irreconcilable differences. Looking into the future and I was thinking, I don't ever want to get into a, a, a custody battle with him. I don't want to do this. I don't mm -hmm. want to go head to head with him. So I need to make sure that everything around is good. I, I've had, I had children. I knew mm -hmm. bringing children into certain circumstances, you have to make sure everything's safe and Wait, secured and okay. And Wait, she was a single, she was a single mom? What? Right. She said, I've had children. Yeah. So she was a single mom? Bro. Like what, MJ need to fresh and fit? Man, this is supposed to be Fred Rax, bro. Like, yeah, we go to the, nah, I don't want to make this a fresh and fit episode, but right. god damn. This is Womanizer like, Sunday, bro. bro uh, yeah, Womanizer Sunday. Bro, man, I said it before, I'll say it again, guys. Yo, there's nothing worse than a man that doesn't understand his value. And as a matter of fact, you not understanding your value as a woman's superpower and how she's able to finesse, man. Like, bro. If you're a guy and you got some type of money, you got some type of status, you got some kind of clout, you got respect from your peers or individuals around you, like understand that you're an exceptional male and you need to be very cautious on the females that you deal with. And the thing is, is that let's keep it a million, bro. Like most girls don't bring that much value. Like they really don't, man. Like, oh, I'm pretty. So what? You and a mil billions of other girls are pretty. Like guys, men are the prize, not women, bro. So you need to know your value, understand your value and demand excellency from the woman you decide to share that value with man like it kills me to see guys like michael jackson see celebrities guys that are very fit guys like logan paul for example right like mm -hmm. what the hell like this woman doesn't deserve a guy like logan paul she used up 304 in her goddamn 30s logan paul's not even 30 yet and he's over here getting <laughs> married to this chick like what the fuck is going on man? Wait, she, she's 30 Bro, she's like, oh, she's <laughs> Chris, come on. <laughs> she was born. She was born in like ninety or ninety one or something like that. She's like thirty two, thirty three. We do it live. Yeah, man. So it's like, bro, like these types. Forget of stuff, about it. But it kills me, man. It really does kill me when I see guys that like are really good at what they do, wifing up girls that don't deserve to get wifed up, man. So, bro. I'm not telling you how to go pick up an 18-year-old, but what I am saying is that understand that you need to bring, find a woman that has some type of reciprocal value back to what you bring, man. Right? Um, so, yeah, dude. Like, in this case, like, this chick, bro, come on, man. Single mom. She ain't even hot. MJ, what are you doing, bro? But that comes from not understanding your worth, not understanding your value. And that's the importance of the red pill, man. It's not. It's not so that you sit here and get angry at women and all this other shit. No, it's so that you understand your value so you don't get mad at the girl that you fucking pick that sucks. You know what I mean? If you pick, if you know how to select the right girl, are you going to be mad? So, anyway, it is what it is, man. Uh, uh, shout out to Roll Tomasi. He did an episode earlier today on uh, Jada Pickett Smith and Will Smith. Like, bro, you know, if Will Smith was RP aware, he would never brought that dumbass 304 into his life, man. It kills me when guys that, you know, have accomplished so much in life, you know, get derailed by stupid females, man crazy you know i have a question like do you think that it was harder for like people to become red pill back in back in those days like around the 90s when mj was actually prevalent and you know actually popping i think so because they didn't have the internet yeah i think i think it probably like hurt them and it helps us now that we yeah. have the internet but it could also hurt men back in those days as well yeah because i i think like back then since the internet wasn't a thing like this was kind of like you know little small circles of people like pickup artists for example right like they like that whole um industry that whole like um like society got exposed in the early 2000s thanks to vh1 the tv show uh, the pickup artists mm. that's how i actually got exposed to that stuff was with uh mystery right mystery was uh the the star of that show and i was like holy shit and then that brought me um interest and i read you know the mystery method the game all that other stuff and then that that book right the mystery method it teaches you like raw red pill knowledge like it, it kind of opens the door for you to understand um the female psyche how women may select how women operate etc now it's like mainstream but back then it was like un like it was a very you know hush hush underground society so um you know and, and people can say what they want to say about mystery they can say that he's crazy he's insane etc you know i've had conversations with mystery uh 
and, and I think that he's a very sharp and smart individual, and he literally pioneered uh, in a, a damn near pioneered an entire movement that made guys understand because right typically when guys get this RP awareness it starts with with the pickup culture the pickup knowledge and then it expands into that right you get beyond just the you know what what the attraction triggers are for women and you understand what why women behave the way that they do and you have like a deep understanding on female nature and once you have a deep understanding for female nature you really can't get mad at them you you just understand like the the uncomfortable truths like hey they're just selecting for the best genes for the offspring. That's what it comes down to, right? And um, and then you start to understand that most men simply don't measure up to what women want. They want a guy who's a bad boy that's attractive while simultaneously still having the <laughs> provider instinct. Uh, Let's be uh. honest here. Most guys don't have that. It's very difficult to find that in one guy. So that's why women have to do what they do where they're, you know, they're essentially dating and or dealing with different men that uh, are able to bring different um, compartments to them. This is why women compartmentalize dating. Right. Mm. There's girls that have guys that are like in the friend zone. Then they have other guys that they're smashing. And then they have a guy that's a sugar daddy. And then they have a guy here that's maybe um, paying and taking them out for dates every now and then. They got another guy here that they talk to on the phone that makes them feel better when they're feeling down. Like women are, uh, you know, have acclimated to the new sexual marketplace and they pretty much put men in certain roles or compartmentalize their roles to their benefit. This is why most girls, you know, I always laugh when girls I always say, are you smashing anybody? They're like, oh, no, get the fuck Cat. out of here. You're smashing one or two different guys and then you're talking and or dealing with other men. Right. Or, you know, maybe you have a long term partner that uh, fulfills everything for you. But most of the time, most guys can't do it all. Unfortunately, most guys get put in some kind of role. But I want. But that's why we teach you on this podcast to be that guy that could be the asshole while simultaneously paying the bill and then are arousing around the side while also not being a simp like you, you need to. It, it's a it's a very delicate balance, but you can be that man. You just have to understand females and female nature to be able to do so. And this is what kills me when I see guys like Michael Jackson that are insanely talented right and you know god's here what they do but then when it comes to women they fumble right it's a fucking l because a guy like michael jackson should have five chicks 10 chicks 20 girls five, five, five? Oh, no oh, god. Five, five is way too little this you know, he should be having little. 20 chicks 20 yeah. chicks 20 you know what I mean? At all least. being super loyal and uh, as loyal and um monogamous monogamous to him only yep three, that's how it should be i want i want day. really successful guys to be having multiple women bro that's how it should be, bro. You busted your ass to get to that level. You should be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Fuck out of here with this whole, oh, you should be a real man and be monogamous. Fuck you, bitch. That's easy for you to say when you got your value up front. I'm speaking for all the guys out here that have to bust their ass to make money, etc., and want to be able to have multiple women. You fucking earn that right and privilege, and I think you should be able to do so if you want to do it as a man, man. The fuck out of here with all this bullshit about, you should be a real man and have one girl. Anytime a girl tells you you should be a real man, be prepared. That's woman is for this. Okay, it's it's basically <laughs> translation. I want you, right, to forego some of your leverage as a man that you earned, by the way, to allow me to have some type of uh, leverage over you with monogamy, be even though I didn't have to earn my value and you did. I want you to go ahead and succumb to some type of uh, situation that doesn't necessarily benefit you, but it benefits me. And I'm going to shame you and shame your masculinity in order to get you to do so. You should raise children that aren't yours. That's what a real man does. You should pay this bill for me, even though I haven't earned it. You should take care of me and give me this um, provisioning, even though I'm a fucking raging slut. Like, they're going to say all this stupid shit, right? To try to shame you into doing something and bullying you into doing something that you necessarily want to do. Fuck that shit. We don't do that over here. We bust our ass to become successful. We bust our ass to earn uh, money, earn status, etc. We're not going to sit here and be monogamous to girls. Fuck that shit. That's fucking stupid. And for all the losers, all you blue pill simps out there that say, Myron, you should exercise some dick discipline. Blah, 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 blah. Fuck you. I busted my ass and disciplined myself in all the other endeavors to even be put in this position. If I want to fucking have other women, I'm going to fucking do so. And I'm going to do it ethically. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to let them know what the fuck it is. I'm obviously use protection. Uh, but be, I'll be fucking <laughs> damned if someone's going to tell me what the fuck to do uh, when it comes to, you know, chicks or anything else like that. If I want to have multiple women, I'm going to fucking do that shit. Fuck you guys that sit there and try to police men on their sexuality after they have to bust their ass to get to a certain point to even have the ability to even get the sexuality from females, man. It's always some fucking losers that don't get girls that always got some bullshit to say about exercise some dick discipline. You should be monogamous. 50 body count. What are you talking about? That's too much. Or, well, you're... 
promoting degeneracy, blah, 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 blah. Look, man, I'm telling guys what the fuck it is with the new normal, with the way how women operate nowadays. These girls nowadays, especially if she's college educated, are fucking sluts. So guess what? You need to be able to identify these sluts and pick which one, uh, pick which ones aren't sluts so that you can go ahead and put yourself in the best position, man. Guys got to understand their value. Most importantly, they need to understand women so that they protect their goddamn value. W. Anyway, with that said, we're going to talk about also, um, I do, I do want to answer part of Bill's question. Um, back then, the dating market wasn't as globalized as it is now. I agree with that. That's why it's harder to get red pilled back then because the dating market isn't as globalized. Yeah, dude. And another thing too, man, is like these trad cons, which again, I'd be happy to debate any of these trad cons. They they want men to turn the other cheek and sit there and be honorable and sit there and like you know play by a set of rules that doesn't necessarily benefit them anymore like what the fuck is that man like that's like like honestly like what these tradcons want you to do is they tell you hey you know what i'm gonna teach you how to box all right i'm gonna teach you how to box okay this is how you parry this is how you fucking you know um this is how you slip or you know this is how you catch boom right they teach you all this shit right but then it's fucking match time right and, you know, you show up, you're like, yeah, I'm ready to fight. Yeah, woo! Right? Yeah! Let's get ready to rumble! You show up on <laughs> fight night, right? Next thing you find out, the nigga you're fighting is doing Muay Thai! He throwing elbows, he's kicking, he's, kicking he's the hell leaning. Out of you. you only know how to fight with your hands! <laughs> right? What's gonna happen? You're gonna get fucked up! Okay, you could be the best boxer ever. You were trained to use these two bad boys. Woo, you're ducking and weaving, buck, ducking and weaving, you're catching, blah, blah. I could do this shit. Woo, and you show up, and the niggas start doing Muay Thai. You're going to get fucked up. Congratulations, my friends. That is the 2023 fucking dating marketplace that these tradcons are not telling you. They're teaching you niggas how to box, and these bitches are out here doing Muay fucking Thai. <laughs> They're fucking <laughs> kneeing you in the nuts. They're kicking you upside yeah. the head, and you're dumbass. Oh, my God. You're limited to your fucking hands. Do you think you're going to win? Fuck out of here. No. So I'm telling y'all niggas, you need to use your fucking knees and elbows and legs as well. You need to fight fire with fucking fire. Okay, but they sit there and tell you, no, keep boxing in a Muay Thai match. Get the fuck out of here, man. That's the problem with these fucking trad cons. They expect you to turn the other cheek and continue to box when everyone's doing Muay Thai. Fuck out of here, man. Anyway, W Mo soundboard. Yeah, thank you, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, that's really what it comes down to. Really, that that's that's what that's that is the dating marketplace in twenty. 23. I'm teaching you guys Muay Thai. These tradcons are telling you how to box. No, man. It ain't gonna work. Boxing is fantastic. Don't get it twisted. I love boxing. Fantastic sport. I still think it's one of the best. But guess what, man? Just like I believe in nuclear families, I believe it should be one man, one woman. I think it should be uh -uh. excuse me, marriage. I think marriage is a great institution, etc. It's extinct. Damn. It's extinct. It's extinct. Look at MMA versus boxing now. It's extinct. So, for all the fighters out there, you guys understand that analogy very well. Mm -hmm. uh, let's keep going. I wanted to make sure that he and I were really, really united because we were going to be up against so much. In an interview with Oprah, Presley revealed that she and Jackson periodically tried to reconcile in the four years following their divorce, but it was difficult. The tabloids did not stop because of the sex scandal and wrote that the couple's relationship was not real. During that time, Michael was supposed to write the music for the Sega Genesis video game Sonic the Hedgehog 3, but left the project when allegations of violence surfaced and were uncredited. He was a fan of Sonic and collaborated with Sega in 1990 on the arcade I game Moonwalker. That game. Therefore, for the first time, he felt the unpleasant consequences of the culture of cancellation, which had not yet become a common phenomenon at that time. The musical career was gradually waning, but the performer still had something to say to society. In 1995, Michael released the double album, History, Past, Present, and Future, Book One. In it, the first disc, History Begins, was a top hits album and exclusively new compositions and a couple of covers were in the second, History Continues. The album became the best-selling multi-disc release of all time. It was also nominated for a Grammy Award in the Album of the Year category. The testimony of a musician whose self-pity now equals his talent. 
The album spawned two hits, You Are Not Alone, which debuted immediately at first place in the charts, thereby hitting the Guinness Book of World Records. And his duet with younger sister Janet, Scream, became a protest against the media's harsh treatment of Jackson during the allegations. The music video for Scream in the spaceship, which cost a record $7 million to produce, won another Grammy for Michael Jackson for superb effects. Oh, oh I remember this. Oh, I remember that. Seven I, million, I, though? I Seven million. Us, drew sharp criticism for using. Seven I, million, bro. That was, when was that released? Nineteen what? I had to mute that for a little bit because. Yeah, 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 that's fine. That's fine because we're gonna hit, get hit with a copyright. Seven million. Uh, what year was that released? Ninety. Scream. Yeah. Uh, bro, we gotta get the inflation calculator on that bad boy. Let's look that up. Yo, let's let's, let's, let's look that up real quick, I got Bills. I, I got, I got, I got it. All right, for sure. Just so y'all know, Bill's got like five monitors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bill's got like five uh, monitors, bro. Y'all should really see it. It's, it's, it's in front of me. I could count seven. <laughs> even bum ass Chris got two monitors, even though he don't do none. Oh, All right, so na- so that's <laughs> so that's ninety five, right? Um, nineteen ninety five. It was ninety five. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to the inflation calculator. Also, make sure y'all get the likes up. Make sure y'all go ahead and like the YouTube and Rumble stream, you know, for the algo. Comment for the algo in the chat as well. FNFsuperchat.com. Make sure y'all get y'all donations. We are reading everything, $10 and up. And, uh, yeah, send in the road of rants as well. Yes. FNFsuperchat.com, guys. We are definitely going to read. What You said Bill's 10, 10 and up? 10 and up yeah. on, on everything, pretty yeah, much. 10 and up on everything. We're reading it, guys. So uh, we appreciate that. Uh, what, what, so what, what's, the, what's the number? Uh, Mo. Image. Wait, I put a I put a wrong zero. Okay. <laughs> hey, one zero makes a big difference. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Two million. Two million. No, seven, seven million. million, bro. Seven? Seven million, yeah. Seven million seven. back then to today. It got oh, someone's saying twelve million uh, in the chat. Fourteen, 14. million. Yeah, fourteen. Fourteen million. Fourteen? Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, fourteen point one tech, you know. Yeah. So fourteen million one hundred thousand so twenty well, yeah, one hundred twenty eight thousand and nineteen. Damn, my man spent twelve million uh fourteen <laughs> on a mu- on a uh, they said just for one song. Yeah. Fourteen million. That music video. Shout out to the music industry back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys gotta remember, like uh for them to use effects like that, like AI wasn't a thing back then and um, CGI and all the other stuff. They probably had to actually film it. They didn't have like the computers were limited in '95. So, goddamn, that's crazy. Yeah, there was a lot of sound. There was a lot of visual effects and stuff like that. So, God for them damn. to do that back then, that's probably yeah. crazy. Holy, okay. Janet Jackson trash, but that's fine. Hey, no, I'm just, <laughs> just kidding. You, you like Janet? Yeah, she was. Like, yeah, yeah. Was she all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the thing that sucks where her her biggest uh, L is that she's brothers. With, her brother is Michael Jackson. Damn, that's that's the biggest L for her. You know what's crazy? It, it, it's always gonna it, be compared to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's that's yeah. Yeah. If she was just like Janet, I don't know, Lacks or something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. J- J- niggas said John, <laughs> Janet Johnson. Okay, <laughs> now, it would have been different. It's were, a it's a Simone? curse for all of his siblings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a curse for all of his. siblings. I think that's why his brothers like didn't talk to him. They're jealous. Oh, one thousand. I think two. I know especially Jermaine, but I know there was another. Wasn't it that, Tito? That tried to go solo. Oof. I know Jermaine was one of them. The best was I remember it was "Do What You Do," but it made some traction, but not really much. But because it's it's not Michael Jackson, so even um, Jermaine's best song that had some traction still flopped mm. because it's not Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn. Mm. All right. Well, let's get, uh, let's keep it rolling. anti-semitic statements in the lyrics so in the original song were the words <laughs> Jew me Bruh. sue me everybody do me kick me kike me don't you black or white me oh shit oh, shortly oh, after oh, being oh, criticized oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, yo, I wait, was not expecting that one. Yo, God. God. wait, what? God damn. Oh, shit. Yo, MJ. My, I, I knew it. I knew he was going to give you a gun to my I knew it. Marin, please, let's move on, please. All right, we're moving on. You two, we love you. You two, we love you. You two, we love you. 
love you, YouTube. Man. YouTube, we love oh, you. Oh, Lord. We love you, YouTube. Yo, Yo you really said that shit on the song? Hey, my... Yo, the 90s were different. Uh, bro, bro still, Wait, man, he still my... got Grammys, bro. bro. My, my... Now we know why he didn't fucking uh, Martin, get some great. Now we know. Yo. Myron. Yeah. Myron. Yeah. Myri, Shut up, nigga. <laughs> yo, this is crazy. Yo, the 90s were different. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Woo. Bro, you trying to get this. God seat? damn. Bro, we about to. Yeah. This channel about to obliterate. Lights are still on. <laughs> <laughs> yo. Bro, we about to evaporate. I already know what's about to come now. Bro, I, here, here, look, I don't I didn't even know what's going on. Watch. Bruh, ADL's the, the, about the to sweep in. The chat. Let's go, bro. let's go ahead. Bro, the chat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't show the rumble chat. <laughs> <laughs> don't show, hey, don't hey, show we the love y'all. Bro, rumble. chat, bro. Do you, do you want our channel to operate or not, bro? My bad. It's nigga saying run it back. <laughs> <laughs> Kill the YouTube stream. Oh, <laughs> shit. All right, let's keep going. Uh, let's keep going. Sized by the Anti-Defamation League and others, Michael rewrote them and posted the song with the lines changed. Ah. At the end of the year, Michael was rehearsing a performance <laughs> on television and suddenly lost consciousness. Probably it was caused by a panic attack due to stress. The musician was taken to the hospital. Lisa Marie came to visit him from time to time, but even then there was discord between them, which resulted in a quick divorce. Another memorable track on the album was Earth Song. It was remembered because of one incident. Before it, the composition topped the UK singles chart on Christmas Eve. Michael was supposed to appear and perform the song at the Brit Awards in 1996. His performance was disrupted by pulp singer Jarvis Cocker. It was his protest against Jackson's Christ-like persona. Michael called that foray into the scene disgusting and cowardly. The artist held a tour supporting the album, visiting 35 countries and 58 cities and giving 82 concerts. It was his most attended tour. While visiting Australian Sydney, the performer married Debbie Rowe at the Sheridan on the Park Hotel. Initially, the, the couple hell? met when the girl worked as an assistant to his dermatologist. A friendship began, and she proposed to Michael that she be the mother of his children after Lisa Marie Presley refused to have children with him. Pause. When Michael divorced... See, what what I say, bro, people try to say all the time, Oh, Myron, it's not true that, you know, uh, no-name women are able to get multi-millionaire successful men. I mean, Exhibit A? Like, come on, man. Like, guys, <laughs> men will gladly and happily date and or marry way below them socioeconomically however women will not do the same now i know they say oh in general like people tend to marry within their own um their own class yeah that's a that's true to a degree but the point is is that when men have affluence and men have status etc they're okay with marrying down women are not just because it happens doesn't necessarily mean that men aren't necessarily open uh, sorry excuse me just because men tend to date and or marry in their own class does that necessarily mean that they're not necessarily open to women that are below them if they're hot enough and will give them a chance okay so and and the other thing too is that like a lot of these successful guys that have money whatever they might marry a chick in their class but look at who they cheat with a girl that's younger badder might not necessarily be in the same social class so bro this whole situation of people oh no they marry within the class blah, blah blah the point is is that women that don't have any status or any type of income have the ability right to do so and in today's day and age with social media dating apps etc the sugar apps women have more chances than ever before to date up and exercise their hypergamous nature that's why so many guys are struggling with women because women are able to access men that they otherwise they would have never had access to thanks to the internet and dating apps so a girl that might have given a, a guy a chance back in like 1995 that like lived in the same neighborhood etc right she might have given that guy a chance you know 20 30 years ago she ain't giving that nigga a chance now when she has nba players hitting her up celebrities hitting her up etc in her dms like her sexual market value in her eyes is higher her her she has a higher perceived sexual market status in her head so she's like i can do better and here's the other thing too that you guys have probably learned from watching this show a lot of girls have an inability to distinguish sexual market value from what relationship market value yeah one more time for you all right a lot of girls have an inability to distinguish sexual market value from relationship market value okay sexual market value is she's attractive she's hot i find her attractive 
relationship market value is, yo, can you land and keep the guy for a long-term relationship? I would argue most girls have very little to no relationship market value, especially the hotter the girl, because the hotter she is, the less she has to work on her relationship market value because guys are willing to put up with more bullshit to date her. So she doesn't work, she doesn't um, exercise that skill set of being able to be kept by a man. That's why these girls that are like models, these girls that are like super hot, etc., they're chronically single. Why? Because they never work on their relationship market value skills. They're just been coasting on their sexual market value uh, skills, their sexual market value uh, levels. And that's why you look at these girls, right? And they struggle to keep a guy long term. And I predict in the next 30 years, right, as a lot of these women start hitting the wall, right, that grew up in the social media age, etc., you're going to see more and more sad and depressed women because they never worked on their relationship market skills because they were continuously jumping from guy to guy using their sexual market value uh, levels to their advantage. And they never learned and exercised the skill set to keep a guy long term or relationship market. I mean, look at, look at, I'll give you guys an example. How many dumbass chicks, right? Sit there. I'll use myself as an example. They'll try to they'll try to like show a DM between me and them and say, "Look, he hit me up." Blah blah blah. Yeah, for sex, you dumb slut. You know, like uh, how many of you hoes can actually like lock me down in a relationship? None. Okay, Angie, laughing at you, bitches. Like uh, seriously. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm dead ass, <laughs> nigga. Like I'm dead ass. Like. <laughs> She'll be looking at these girls and be like, ah, oh, you guys are some dumb hoes. Like, like literally laughing at them. Because it's like, y'all are getting hit up for sex and nothing else. L. L upon L upon L. And girls that get it, girls that are able to get some type of, like, relationship or get something more serious from a guy, they look at these chicks and they're like, you're a fucking idiot. You can't tell the difference. You are a dumb 304 dumb hoe. That's why she packs the condoms for me and laughs at you bitches. Uh. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, she literally me and her laugh at you hoes, man. <laughs> Fucking crazy, bro. <laughs> Love you, Angie. Yeah, man. So anyway, um, but, that, well. but that's modern. That's so many modern day women, bro. They're not able to distinguish the difference between the two, and that's how. Yeah, especially like these OnlyFans three hundred fours. Like you really think niggas? If you if you got OnlyFans as a female, do you seriously think men are hitting you up to have intellectual conversation? <laughs> like crazy bro they li literally delusional we had one chick she was on uh, uh intellectual conversation name three countries uh asia what the f <laughs> <laughs> like bro we talking about women bro yeah mm -hmm. man and the, the fact that she said intellectual conversations she couldn't even name three countries bro Man, and, but remember, her guy he watches the show, so I'm like, yeah, he's selling the dream on God. <laughs> you stupid. He's selling. Bro. He's selling the dream. Yeah, it is what it is. But uh, anyway, um, so yeah, I, I say all that to say, yes, women absolutely have the opportunity and ability to date guys way above them, and men are, will gladly do so, as you guys can see here on Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Yeah, and this girl's mid too. Like, <laughs> god damn, she's mid. She is. She uh. Let, let's pull this up again. What is she like a five on her five or a six on her best day? I'll give her a four. Yeah, man. Like God, I'm trying to be nice here. Lisa, Debbie Rowe was six months God. pregnant with his child, and they soon got married. Michael Joseph Jackson Jr. was born on February 13, 1997, and a year later, the couple had their second child. Girl Paris Michael Catherine Jackson was born on April 3, 1998. Michael Joseph Jackson Jr. later became known as the Prince. A team of six nannies and six nurses took care of the boy for the first few months. Debbie, who called herself a private person and rarely gave interviews, was stunned by the publicity and popularity she received after her marriage to Jackson. Unhappy with the arrangement, Roe filed for divorce on October 8, 1999, and gave Michael all custody of the children. Later, she would return oh, those shit. rights. In 1997, Pause. Michael released Blood on the Dance Floor. She, she gave him all the right? What the hell? Yeah. And then got him back. And then she got the kids back? Man, that is an L. I'm what sorry. What the fuck? What? You stupid. I mean. <sighs> that boy need a fresh and fit. I can't even believe it. Bro, I'm, I'm lost. I'm, 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 I'm actually baffled. I'm, trying, I'm looking at the <laughs> pictures of the kids, though. I mean, they look a little sus, man. I mean, are those his? <laughs> 
Michael Pick. I don't I think mean, so, bro. Bro, them, them, I don't know, man. Like, bro, those kids look like straight up Caucasian, full on. Did they do a paternity test? <laughs> look at the chat. The chat's just yeah. The chat is just skeptical, just, just like me. Yeah. Okay, all right. I'm not crazy. That baby is too white, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, bro, what the hell? Like, cause we know Mike's real skin color. I'm like, bro, cause. No matter how much your skin color changed, your DNA is the same. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like, they should have, there should at least be some, like, curls going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there has to be, like, some curls going on. Like, some, it can't be just naturally straight. There's got to be some curls going on. Not just straight up, yo. Yo, I'm talking about, I'm like, why is, it, I'm like, bro, he's, he got a lot of his black in his family. Why, why his kids got blonde hair, blue eyes, bro? Like, <laughs> God <laughs> damn. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that is a little weird. That is a little weird. <laughs> you really blonde hair, blue eyes. Uh, yo, Mo, do some research on the side and see if those are like uh, fully on his kids, like uh, on the side, while Bills rules this. And then, okay, so let's go to the. Uh, so I think we covered enough as far as like Mike's background and relationships and children and everything else like that. You want to go let's, to the other? One? Let's go back to the criminal stuff. Yeah, let's hit that first video. It's only about three minutes, but I think it's him addressing. It gives a quick timeline on on some of the uh, the uh, you know the criminal investigation type stuff. So uh, this is 1993. Before you label or condemn me, don't treat me like a criminal, because I am innocent. <laughs> the most humiliating ordeal of my life but if this is what I have to endure to prove my innocence so be it God Mr. Damn. Jackson has been repeatedly advised by those who stood to make fortunes in his business affairs to pay money rather than face certain false allegations he did pay money rather than litigate two false allegations that he had harmed children Uh, take my ugly mug out of it so that we can read the uh, oh, yeah, the stuff. You. Rewind it just a little bit. Got you. Say and turn on the music a little bit if we can. That thing is loud. Okay. Two false allegations. That thing look like Jerry Springer. <laughs> Boom. So, plus. The fact that, you know, um, they didn't pursue a criminal case is very telling, guys. I'll tell you all this, man. Um, they would have loved to prosecute you know, an international superstar for sexual misconduct if they had the evidence to do so. But they didn't have the evidence to do so, and it was shoddy at best, so they didn't do it. So that should tell you guys everything that you need to know right there and then. Because trust me, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Prosecutors, a lot of the times, are cloud chasers, man. If they can go ahead and prosecute someone who's famous and has money and is successful, they will absolutely do so. I mean, a few years after this, who did they go after? O.J. Simpson. Right. And they put all their money into getting him, uh, you know, going after him, even though he ended up uh, being found uh, not guilty, which we talked about that on my uh, episode on Fed Reacts as to why he ended up beating that case. Um, the prosecution absolutely dropped the ball on that one. Um, but I also give you guys my account of who I think actually committed the murder. Um, and I will say this. OJ did not act alone. We all know he did it, but uh, he didn't do it by himself. Um, if you guys look at the crime scene photos, like there was no way that he would have been able to unleash that level of savagery on his own. Uh, but let's keep going. Let's keep going on here. And Jesus said to love the children and be like children. And he always surrounded himself like with children. And that's how I was raised to that believe clear to be like that. few weeks a large amount of ugly malicious information has been released into the media about me please keep an open mind and let me have my day in court I deserve a fair trial like every other American citizen Pause. 
So 10 years later, um, he gets arrested and charged, and uh, he goes to trial, which just so you guys know, by the way, 90, what, like 97% of cases are plea bargain in the United States, 95% plus. Um, so for him to go to trial, obviously, you know, that's a big risk, guys, because when you go to trial, what you're effectively saying is, okay, if I get found guilty here, I am going to get the full brunt of whatever the government is coming at me with. So let's say the maximum penalty is 20 years and you go to trial. More than likely, you're going to get 21 years. I'm just kidding. Not 21 years. But you're going to get close to that upper echelon of whatever the sentencing might be because the state looks at it like we're spending – a lot of times when you're, especially if you're going after someone like Michael Jackson, you're going to spend millions upon millions of dollars to go ahead and go to trial. I know if I'm not mistaken, the OJ Simpson case, the cost, the city of Los Angeles, like uh, a couple million, it was between somewhere between two to 10 a million. Mo, Mo can you fact check it real quick for me? How much the, um, how much the OJ Simpson trial cost? Um, but, uh, but yeah, so. If the if the state is going to go to trial against you, especially someone like that who has the means and ability to fight the fight it with their own attorneys, it's going to cost millions of dollars. They're going to make sure that you get the upper end of uh, whatever charge you're facing as far as like um, penalty goes. So, um, so yeah, so he didn't plead guilty um, because obviously, even if you plead guilty to a lesser charge, it's an L. Uh, and this is also a lot of you guys. Oh well. Tory Lanes was stupid because he didn't plead guilty. He should have pled guilty, blah, blah, blah. I know a lot of people, you know, were fucking Monday morning quarterbacking it, right, to include uh, Tony Ayo. No offense to Tony Ayo. But he was saying, oh, uh, anytime a witness is, is alive after an allegation, like, you might as well just take the plea, blah, blah, blah. What people don't understand is that Tory Lanes, number one, is a foreign national. And number two, if he got found guilty, even if it's of a lesser felony, he would have gotten deported and his ability to earn income and make money would be significantly diminished because he would have to stay in Canada and not be able to tour in the United States. We all know musicians make most of their money off touring. I'm going to turn it to Bills and Mo here to talk about that here in a second because they're the musicians. So um, for people to say that Tory Lanez was stupid for taking it to trial, no, he was actually very intelligent because if he had taken a plea deal, uh, even though he might have not served time, right? He would have been convicted of a felony, and being convicted of a felony as a uh, lawful permanent resident or green card holder, even as a visa holder, pretty much kiss your uh, status in the United States goodbye. They're going to deport you. ICE is going to be there right after um, you get found guilty, even if you don't serve jail time, because um, keep in mind, guys, that being convicted of a felony is it has no bearing on how much time you do, right? So if you're convicted of the felony, it doesn't matter how much time you serve as, as long as the charge in itself is punishable by more than 365 days or 366 days or more, that's considered a felony and you immediately become deportable, okay? So, um, and then also it's just a bad stigma. If you get, even if you plead guilty to a lesser felony, um, it could, it still could be a blemish on your mark, right? I'm sure they probably told Mike, okay, just plead guilty to sexual indecency with a child or uh, or sexual assault or some other bullshit like that that would still fucking ruin his legacy, still make him look bad. He'd probably still have to register in a sex offender registry, which is for life a lot of the times. So, yeah, good on him to fight it. And you guys are going to see the the uh, what ended up happening when he fought it. Um, go ahead, uh, uh, Mo Bills. Talk about how artists make well, their money. Well, please. um, Well, first... I wanted to anything that I was wrong. No, well, actually, no. First of all, I wanted to get the O.J. Simpson one. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Um, it was nine million dollars for the prosecution. God damn. And <laughs> and five and five million for the defense. Wait, it cost O.J. five million. Yes. Okay. For the def defense was five million. The prosecution was nine million. Damn. And just so you guys know, let's use that inflation calculator again. We know roughly around that time it's about double. So that was eighteen million. In today's dollars, yep. the state of Los Angeles spent, the city of Los Angeles spent, right? Which, by the way, I'll tell y'all right now, they don't got that kind of money, okay? <laughs> uh, these these liberal cities don't have that kind of money, even though they tax you out to Wooza. And then that's $10 million for OJ's defense. The dream team, if you guys remember. He had literally some of the best attorneys on his team. Uh, Johnny, Johnny Cochran. Cochran yep. Cochran. Yep. Johnny Cochran, uh, Shapiro. Uh, who else? <laughs> uh, was it, was it uh, Rob Kardashian? Yes, Rob Kardashian yeah. was on that team as well. Even though he wasn't a defense attorney, but he was uh, he was a close friend of O.J. Simpson. A.K. For some of you guys that are wondering, yes, that Kim, that's Kim Kardashian's father, that dumb whore. So, uh, and he had a bunch of other attorneys on there, really good attorneys. I, I can't remember all of them. I know people in the chat are about to put it here. Watch the episode I did on Fed Reacts, guys, on O.J. Simpson. I went over his dream team 
uh, Dream Legal Team, and and I went over each lawyer and their their expertise and background. But sorry, you were uh, Mo. You were saying about concert touring. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes, that's where um artists make all their money, especially any of the especially any of the signed artists. That is the only way that the artist actually makes their money, um, especially uh most signed artists, of course. Independent artists, of course, they, when you're independent or um, you don't you don't really get like most of your money through sales, through CDs, streams. It's the labels Tori's and the producers. Independent though, right? Yes. Okay. He, it, he actually bought ha- out his masters. So gotcha. now ever since he bought out his masters 2020, earlier 2020, like maybe spring 2020, either spring or late winter, he bought out his masters. So he had 100% rights to his entire catalog. Free Tory, man. Yeah. God. Bro. And, and and although, you know, right when he bought back his masters, that's what that entire debacle started. Just a few months after. Man, everybody knows that fucking bitch, Tor- uh, Meg the Stein's friend. I forget her fucking name. She's the one that shot Meg, bro. Kel- everybody Kelsey. knows that shit. Kel- yeah, her, her ass shot her. I mean, bro. Okay. Let me not go on an angry rant right now, but bro, <laughs> just so you guys know, because people didn't want to fucking say this shit. Meg and her friend Chelsea were literally in a fist fight. Okay. It, it like literally on some street fighter shit. Literally, bro. <laughs> no. Okay. Witnesses, several oh, witnesses saw can... the fist fighting in, in a very, you know, affluent, nice area of LA. You know, and there was nails found, uh, jewelry, etc. There were fist fighting. Okay, so explain to me, and Tori was trying to break it up. Explain to me why Tori would be the one to shoot at Meg the Stallion when he wasn't the one that was involved in an altercation with her. It was the two women that were fighting the whole time over the fact that Tori was smashing both of them. Why would he shoot at Meg? Doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And then also explain to me why <coughs> that chick took the Fifth Amendment and didn't say anything while she was on the stand and she needed immunity to testify. Hmm. hmm. It's because she knew damn well that she was involved in some bullshit and she, pr- and she shot at Meg. Obviously, she didn't want to admit that. Meg didn't want to say that. They needed a scapegoat and Tori was the fucking scapegoat. And this is coming from a dude... I'm not even a Tory Lanez fan like that, guys. I don't listen to his music like that. I acknowledge that he's a very talented artist, etc. But, bro, uh, yo, I look at the evidence. I look at the facts. I look at the situation between the individuals. I look at all the facts and circumstances. The fact that the fucking main witness switched his story up at the end. Yo, come on, man. Get the fuck out of here with this. 1,000%. Meg was shot by her friend because they were in a very heated physical confrontation. Them bitches was fist fighting on some Mortal Kombat type shit. You're telling me Tori's going to shoot at Meg when it was uh, Meg and her friend fist fighting over Tori? No, it was the friend that fucking got the gun and shot at her. And if I'm not mistaken, she had some gunshot residue on her hands too. Tori did it. Come on, man. I don't know, bro. Just me calling it like I see it, bro. Well, go ahead. Where, sorry, you were saying uh, as far as like the music goes and you said artists making yeah, their most was, money? Yeah, that was it. Um, I landed the plane with the fact that right when Tory Lanez bought his masters, that whole incident happened. That's where I landed the plane at. Gotcha, gotcha. What about you, Bills? Um, well, yeah, just to add on to what Big Mo said, um, first of all, yeah, the moment he went independent, bought out his masters, bought out his contract at um, his record label, the incident happens. And, you know, just, you know, people... Personally, I think it's not coincidental. I think this is all a master plan, you know, but we'll, we'll get into that off the air when we're not on YouTube. But um, to add on to it, definitely concert touring makes a lot of the money, concert touring and merch. And when you buy at your masters, you're getting 100% of all the profits on everything. If I'm not mistaken, Tory Lanez had, right before he went to jail, he released an album as an NFT or something like that. Mm-hmm. And he had sold like a million, he had made like a million dollars in like probably like a couple hours. And I remember he recorded the video now that is a very powerful move as a musician because you're kind of saying we're cutting out the record label completely and we're going to just make all profits off our music every time. I'm sure the record labels felt a certain type of way about that. And if you guys don't know, the music industry is a very powerful industry and they have a lot of things that, 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 that they're doing behind the scenes. Whether you believe it or not, I'm letting you know right now, there's a lot of things happening behind the scenes. But it's also because we're living in a scary time in the music industry where, well, it's actually scary 
for big corporations mm. because of the age of social media and that age of your independent artists are actually being able to profit off their own name, you know, with monetization programs. Um, you can buy out by any marketing, you can buy out any promotions and you're able to make money off of your own name in so many different ways. All you just need is a team of people to help organize. And all you just need is a studio at home where now, especially because the studios, you're able to have just as quality music digitally and you can do, you can make anything studio quality, radio quality, Apple music quality in your own hands. And this is the only time that we've ever been able to do that. Well, this is the first time. I think I project that this is going to be the beginning. We're going to see more of a rise in it. But that's just my prediction. But that means it's scary for big corporations. And especially, you know, corporations like uh, Sony Universal. Sony Universal. And uh, a lot of theirs is ran um, by... Uh, <laughs> YouTube, we love you. Um <laughs> But uh, or just, you know, certain, so just know it's scary. The music industry is very scary for big corporations. Yeah. I mean, artists are able to, you know, had their, had their own autonomy where they're able to market things on their own, create their own music. You don't need the backing of a record label to m market for you like that, like they, like they had the power before, you know, because it used to be so before social media. Um, you would rely on the record label to market you. But nowadays, you can market on your own, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, it used to be if you were an independent artist, it was kind of like a death sentence. But, like, nowadays, in independent artists are everywhere. Yeah. So. Um, Shout out to iPhones. And, and there's so yeah. many. Yeah, mm -hmm. iPhones. There's so many different ways artists can collect money by making their music as their own business. But I think to bring this all back to MJ, um, the reason why, right, he he went to trial is because obviously, guys, uh, it, being convicted of any sexual crime a lot of times is going to have um, bad reputation situations, and also people forget about the fact that a lot of sexual crimes will have to make you uh, uh, be in the sexual offender registry. I mean, guys, for example, Mike Tyson, right? He's still in the sexual offender registry to this day, guys. What? To this day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To this day, bro. We all know that chick was lying too, but yeah, on oh God, stop the cat, yeah, bro. So that that that's what happens with uh, with with um with sexual crimes and convictions. Like you you have a lot of times you're gonna stay in the sexual offender registry for life. So Mike didn't want that shit. And then as far as like Tory Lanez goes, like I told y'all before, uh, you know, foreign national. If he gets convicted of a crime that's uh, that's a felony, whether or not he serves any time in prison is is irrelevant. He's gonna be deported from the United States, and like Mo just described to you earlier in bills, most artists make most of their money from what touring. touring. What's the biggest music um uh, market to make money? United States. Mm -hmm. Unless you're like a Takashi Six Nine, where you're a bigger international than you are uh, in the United States, you're leaving a lot of money on the table uh, by not being able to tour in the United States. You know. And United States is still the biggest um, way to actually promote your music. Like, So if you want to make it big in the first place to make money off of other countries, you want to do it in the United States first. I get what you're saying. Like, it's a springboard to become an international yeah. star. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Especially if your music is, uh, is, is English. Yes. yes. English music. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's true, bro. Fair enough. Nobody cares about the UK. Fuck the mm -hmm. news. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of which, KSI took an L on that fight. They said that he got robbed. I didn't watch the match, so I don't know. But, um, but yeah. Yeah, they were. I did see that they were saying that he got robbed. So, mm -hmm. By fear. I'm going to go back and watch it. But, uh, but I will say that, um, you know, Dylan Dennis, man, like, goddamn, bro. Like, th that, bro, you got to be able to back up your shit, man. You can't be out here talking shit on the internet. You you want to know when I knew Dylan Dennis was going to lose? Mm. Even though I support him um, revealing uh, that chick being a thought. But I knew he was going to lose when he went on the Flagrant podcast. And he said, uh, sorry guys, I'm super hungover. I was with like a fat chick. I got a video. What? That's when I knew. I was like, yep, this nigga, bro, it's a wrap. <laughs> You're drinking as you prepare for a boxing match? That's going to be all over the world? What? Bruh. Yeah. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. 
Bro, that's when I knew it was an L. Yeah, that's an L. When he said he was hungover and he did the uh, during the uh, the podcast with them niggas, bro, I was like, yo, that that's a rap, bro. You drinking in the, b- b- r- like before a fight, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's an L. That's an L all the way, man. I'm all for like calling out thoughts and shit like that, but like, god damn, bro. God damn. Bro got the first double L on, yo. on, the, on the stream, man. Yo, me, yo, me and Ryan did it. <laughs> yeah. All right, but let's go back to to it. I mean, nothing, really. I mean, we played video games. The thing is with that whole thing is that, you know, they go, oh, you slept in the same bedroom as him. It's like, I don't think you understand. Michael Jackson's bedroom is two stories. Damn. Damn. Pause. What? Damn. <laughs> Yo, W Home Alone, baby. <laughs> Shout out to Macaulay Culkin, 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 man. Culkin. Shout out to Macaulay Culkin defending the, defending the king, man. Two-story bedroom. God nah. damn. Two-story. Damn. Damn, 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 damn bro. He, the, what? Hey, little nigga, sleep on the first floor. <laughs> I'll be upstairs. What the, what the <laughs> and then they'll be like, yeah, we slept in the same bedroom. <laughs> yo. Yo, that's actually kind of crazy. I didn't, yo. Hey, man. That's money. N- n- <laughs> nigga's bedroom is a goddamn uh, two-story home. Bro. Nigga's <laughs> 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 trying to say, oh, yeah, I slept in the same bedroom as Mike. Yeah, that's a, t- damn. That's two stories, bro. Shout out to Macaulay Culkin, man. Man, got to drive to the bathroom, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Say it, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This niggas out here, niggas out here trying to say Mike out here touching kids. Man, fuck out of here, bro. I, I never believed it, man. I knew I was like, man, I, I, man. stop the cap, man. Oh, man. Stop the cap. <laughs> you know, and and there, there's just why the fuck yeah. you lying? Why you always lying? Mm, oh my. All right. Why don't you got the sound effect on yours? Uh, because uh, that's Chris's. I'm. I'm 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 on your layout. Put on yours. Oh uh, yeah, we we, we gonna we, do that. Do, we gonna do that. We, we gonna, gonna do that. that. <laughs> Just see how I'm wondering. I don't want to flex our studio some more here, but we got three computers. <laughs> all right, y'all as you can see, Mo got his, Chris got his section there, and then Bill's got you know all all his goddamn monitors. The, y'all the, can see it from uh, Mo's angle actually. What what is that? Is you that? can't see even all of them. Bro. Yeah, you, you can't, can't even see, you can't see like, all of them right here. There's another one like back there. Yeah, yeah. There's another one to the sky. Yeah, there's there's one hanging from the ceiling, and then there's one on top oh, of the not, one that y'all, y'all can't oh, yeah. even see it. No, the, yeah, there's two. There's two in the sky. Yeah, I, yeah. I call it oh, the, yeah, oh, there yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah, two yeah, in the sky. Okay, yeah. okay, I'm okay. Yeah, sir. Yeah, man. Yo, you uh, haven't said that in a long ass time. I did it. I did it, man. It's, it's yeah, a, shout out to that camera angle. Uh, yo, hit that angle again. Yo, Mario, you got you. Yo, that yeah, that that that's like the old stripper cam angle. Why don't we use this angle more, bro? Honestly, yeah. Uh, this angle's nice. I just didn't want to give out too much uh, equipment knowledge, but yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, they don't know how anything mm. is hooked up. Yeah, facts, facts. facts, facts. Right, but niggas gonna copy yeah. us anyway, right? <laughs> On God. They gonna copy us anyway. On God. Right? You, you w Cable y'all. Management, by the way. On God. Oh, yeah. You know the, what I mean? Hey, W Cable Management. Bro. Shout out Andy. Yo, Shout out Andy. Man, y'all wanna know what was the biggest, one of the biggest stresses for me as far as like the studio goes? It's not one thing to have like, you know, just nice equipment and stuff. I'm real big on cable management, making sure this shit is clean. So when people come in, they're not tripping over wires, fuck anything up. You know, the cable management is everything. As y'all can see, we got everything coming through the ceilings. Pause. Uh, you know, even the wires that are on the floor, you can see that we got that shit like taped down with these nice little organizers or whatever. Back, back to the angle real quick. Gotcha. Uh, so, you know, and then actually, I won't reveal it yet, but I just got a new lens as well <laughs> that's, that I'm going to use on this angle. That's going to be really... It's gonna be really good. Ooh. It cost me, uh, you know, a arm and a leg. An yeah, arm and a leg. Yeah, it did cost me an arm and a leg, man. I'm on my line, pretty penny. It's, it's expensive, but I think you guys are gonna enjoy it when it comes in. I'm gonna use it over on this camera angle so that we can use this angle a little bit more. But, uh, but yeah, man. Like, yo, we really are like going hard in the paint, man. I genuinely think at this point, bro, I think we got the best podcast studio in the fucking world, bro. Oh, That's oh, on God. God. I think I think we got. That's I, I mean, for for a lot of the haters, I mean, bro, I got my. <laughs> Like, a lot of these haters that talk shit, bro, like, oh, yo, fuck your fresh and shit, fuck your fraud, talk your shit, blah, 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 blah. Bro, I've spent more on microphones than a lot of you niggas have spent in your goddamn studio, bro. Like, I, a lot of you guys, my, like, one of my mics, this mic right here probably is worth more than a lot of you loser-ass YouTubers' entire studio. And some of y'all been on for 10 plus years, never invested back into the fucking craft, man. It's probably more than some of the rent. So, facts. 
So, so some of our biggest haters, they've been using the same shitty ass microphones, a shotgun mic, same shitty ass camera with the same bum bum ass background with their dumb ass YouTube plaques in the back. You guys know who I'm talking about. The, and they, here's the thing. They're millionaires. They got money, but they don't invest back in the fucking uh, in the content, man. At all. At all. You know, so my, my thing is. I take that money, bro. I invest in real estate and I invest it back into the fucking business, man. I make sure that, you know, my team is taken care of. I make sure that we got the best equipment, make the job easier. Uh, you know, we got the best switchers, best cameras, best fucking even cables, right? For the microphones, like shit like that. And I and I and I gave y'all some sauce on the last episode actually of Fed Reacts on like, you know, how we how we uh run some of our microphones, how to run the Shure SM seven B correctly, right? We talked about that, right? So if you guys are, you know, we're into podcasting or whatever. You should definitely tune into that episode on Michael Jackson Part 1 where we talked about how to appropriately run a Shure SM7B, which, by the way, is a legendary microphone. It was used uh, in the... That's how we started the conversation, right? Because yes. it was used, in th it was used uh, to record Thriller. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, so yeah, man. But this mic right here is a U87 uh, Newman, which I, I might switch this one out too, man. I might flex on the halos a little bit more uh, and get... Uh, I'm looking at a mic right now. We didn't get the likes up enough for me to reveal it on the last episode. Thanks. Uh, but Bills and Mo brought it to my attention, mostly Bills. Shout out to Bills. Uh, and I, you know, I might I might go ahead and pick it up just to really flex on the fucking haters because I genuinely think, uh, you know, rent is due every day, and I want to make sure that we give y'all the best podcast experience when it comes to sound, video, uh, all that stuff, man. So anyway, uh, where were we at? Oh yeah, we were on the trial. Right? And, and it's been a while go since you on. said that. The okay, okay, oh, honey, okay. <laughs> you, you, it's been a long. That's that's. <laughs> That's old school vintage Myron Gaines. I'm talking. Yeah, I didn't even, I, bro. Yeah. I didn't even. See, here's the thing that I'm really gonna be reloading when we get some of this new shit coming in. Oh shit! I got, I got some new additions it's coming a, in, man. Some new cameras coming in. We're gonna have some new angles for y'all, just so you guys know, right? We're gonna have some new camera angles for you guys, uh, you know, uh, of uh, of the studio. So stay tuned for that. I got some real, um, some real upgrades coming, man. Some real, real upgrades. Like I said before, they could hate. You know, while we create and give y'all new shit and they can, we continue to innovate and they can continue to try to copy and they never, they, bro, we're the, <laughs> man, God. We, God. we are the trendsetters, bro. We set the fucking trends, man, but they'll never be able to keep up. Uh, cause I got the best production team. I got one of the best engineers. I got one of the best, uh, well, I, I, but Bills, what was, it, what was your title again? It was a uh, content quality, quality, quality control, control specialist. <laughs> specialist. <laughs> I'll just call you the director, bro. Honestly, you, you, yes. you're the director. My and role then, is director. And yeah, operator. you're the director, and then and then uh, Chris is the producer. <laughs> I called Bills the producer one time, and Chris got all mad. I'm the producer. <laughs> <laughs> bro, okay, man. Man. I, man. I, hey, hey, W Chris, hey, W and W Chris, hey, W Chris. First thing foremost, D W Chris, W Chris. Now, nah, honestly, I want to just say something. I just want y'all to know what Chris does. I honestly cannot do, guys. I'm not gonna lie. Chris is a valuable part bro. of the show. I see a lot of people putting th stuff in the chat. Just know, W Chris, W Chris, W Chris, W Chris, W Chris. That's yeah, all I can what? say. Man, <laughs> one time for Haney Chris. Chris, big up. Chris, oh God, bro, W. Chris, on my soul. <laughs> He's a bum, but he does do, uh, bro. He does have a very important role I, and a very uh, annoying role. I will never, uh, I will his never job touch is that. The most annoying. His I will, job is I will never annoying. touch that Chris the bum shirt. I'm never touching it, bro. <laughs> w, uh, bro, I swear on Myron's kids, I'm never touching that Chris the bum shirt, bro. <laughs> on God, bro. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> By the way, go ahead and die. Yeah, oh, go ahead and buy that. But still, but regardless, what <laughs> he, he has a very difficult uh, gig, man. Dealing with girls is very, bro, man. Yeah. Bro. Anyway, bro, we love you, Chris, bro. Hey, yeah. hey, we love you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, bro. <laughs> uh, and then we got the DBZ stream coming up. Yes, uh, yes, coming, yes. Uh, it's uh, it's very soon, guys. It's coming up. Uh, like I said before. We've been prioritizing, you know, making sure that we have the studio all in order and everything else like that, guys. Because remember, we still got the girls' room down there that we're improving. Us, I've actually revealed the studio a few times on Instagram for y'all, um, like the full studio, and I do like a full walkthrough and everything else like that. But, uh, but yeah, once it's like 100% set and we're good, bro, then we're going to do that DBZ stream. Trust me, it's it's coming very soon, man. I know y'all been waiting for it, but let's uh, go back to the. A lot, oh, go ahead. I do want to say because a lot of people, a lot of you guys, been really, what's it doing the WTC stream? What's, what's the DBZ stream? What's the DBZ stream, bro? You know, Myron was actually the one who's been demanding for the DBZ stream to happen ASAP. So don't worry. He got you. We got you. We're going to make it happen. Oh, yeah. We're going to make it happen. Myron so. wants this DBZ stream. Coming very too. soon. And just he wants that soon. We want it too. We ready. 
Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't worry. We will be prepared to give y'all another stream that probably goes into the morning. Don't worry. Shout out, see, shout out Gorilla Mind. Yeah. Shout, shout out Gorilla yeah, Mind. Yeah, shout out Gorilla Mind. Actually, shipment is on the way. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. When the Gorilla Mind come in, we going on. Uh, yeah. Going on. yeah. <laughs> yeah. When it comes in, then we going on. Bro, that, gorilla, that Gorilla Mind is good as hell. No Plus. cap. Hey, shout out Gorilla Mind. Yeah. <laughs> Even if y'all didn't pay us, bro, Gorilla Mind, y'all fired, bro. Y'all fired. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's go ahead and uh, go back to the uh, to the documentary. Oh, he's acquitted on all charges, ninjas. Shit, man. <laughs> this case is about one thing only. It's about the dignity, the integrity, the decency, the honor, the charity, the innocence and the complete vindication of a wonderful human being named Michael Jackson. Damn. I couldn't speak the truth any earlier than I did. Pause. I wish I could have. Wow. Yeah, okay, nigga. Not the cap. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. You, you. Not the cap. <laughs> Of course. All of a sudden, you have the courage when they're offering you money, bro. Yeah, man. That all of a sudden, hey, hey, let's offer you money so you can lie. To, I mean, I mean, yeah, speak be on this documentary, bro. Yeah, be, be on this documentary, yeah, man. We're gonna, we, we're, we gonna give you a bag. Just and now, come I, on. You know what? Now I suddenly have the courage to speak up out of nowhere. <laughs> yep. Let's go back to it. I wish I was emotionally and mentally capable earlier than I was. <laughs> you mean you wish were paid early? For me, it was never a film about Michael Jackson. This is a film about Wade Robson and James Safechuck. And pause. They and the this nigga looked like uh, like Lil Bill, man. Like a white version of Lil Bill. But what's that uh, cartoon? Uh, fuck. Arthur? Huh? Arthur? He probably looked like Arthur. Oh, wow. And I God. say, hey, hey, what a wonderful <laughs> guy today. Yeah. DW, hey, yeah. looking at him. Oh, that yeah, is crazy, man. That bro. Dude, man. Bro, that nigga bald as hell, bro, man. You, bro, God, you, damn, I can you, see what he's thinking. Bro, you, his head looked like a round Dilbert. Bro. God. <laughs> bro. God damn, man. Bro, right, keep going. Just so, like Caillou. <laughs> Nigga said Caillou? Yeah. Uh, he, he looks like uh, a member of the Blue Man group without the paint. Like, bro, god damn. Oh, god damn. Bro, <laughs> bro swear he, he want to be Sterling Cooper so bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sterling Cooper's hilarious. Their families coming to terms with what happened to them as children. With the accent. And in telling that story, we're in a position to educate people out there about how this kind of grooming child sexual abuse man. really goes on. Mm. Man. Who, who, who really touched Yeah, bro. Facts. Anyway, uh, someone said boiled egghead. <laughs> boiled egghead is uh, crazy. Who's up? Who's up next? Uh, sorry, th let's hit the the next video. Go back to the documentary. Uh, no, no, we had the second Wait, video. Or that was. Oh shit! No, the second one. The second one that we have. We we could read rants though. Yeah, or, or, do, or 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 uh, guys, Evan F Super Chat If you guys got comments on uh, and want to be involved in the show, my ninjas. Yeah, we'll do the stream labs first. Okay. Uh. The uh the five dollar ones came in before the call, and I'll tell you where we stop it at. Okay. So read this one, the Taj the Beast. Uh, okay. Go ahead, pull it up. Oh, I can read. It. I can also. Oh, read you can it. read. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you read it for me real quick? Got bro? you. Yeah, and I got you. Taj so the Beast X says, uh, "Yo, Myron, I called in during your law enforcement show. As a cop, should I still go the FHA route and get a duplex or a house I can be isolated? What would you do?" Um, let's keep that chat. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna Myron just went to go get his glasses, so we're gonna bring that up when he comes back because that's definitely a Myron question. Uh, KB Poppy also said, oh, this one's strictly for Myron as well. Myron, as a single father to one girl, should I put my, well, blank behind baby mama? Put my whole. Yeah, 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 put your whole on yeah. behind baby mama on child support. I haven't yet because I got the impression men shouldn't. If the roles were reversed, she would cook me probably, SMH. She'll definitely cook. She'll cook that. Bro. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll read that from Myron too. Um, and Taj, that's, that's the same. Taj, what up, brother? Yeah, shout that's out to you, Taj. That's pretty much the same question. Yeah. Oh, what's the other one? Myron, you you watched the South Park episode on Michael. <laughs> I don't think I I think he probably watched it. Yeah, we probably watched. Alvin, it. Sam, can you bring back divorce attorneys to discuss responsibilities for unmarried but cohabitating partners in California? This is called Marvin's Law, which is the equivalent 
to a common law marriage for the unarmed. Bro, you in California, bro? I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you're going over the um, Tupac yeah. case. When, when you're going over the Tupac case, sure you watch the documentary called Murder Rap. You can watch it for free on YouTube. Okay. Shout out my dog, Haitian Jack. Yeah, shout out Haitian Jack. Haitian Jack, I just want to say, I see you. Also, side note, I see all of the uh, frequent donators. I just want to say, there's a lot of y'all that keep donating and keep supporting. I love all of y'all, definitely. I follow everyone back that's a frequent donator. So if I haven't, just hit me up. If you're a moderator or whatever, hit me up. I definitely see y'all. And, and guys, make sure you like the video, comment, share, and subscribe on God. Make sure you hit that like button on both Rumble and YouTube. Hit yeah. that like button right now. Like the video, support the show, support the stream. Yeah, guys, we really appreciate it because like I said before, this channel is definitely demonetized. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys don't mind supporting, it would be great. Uh, FNFSuperChat.com or on the Rumble Rants. Um, uh, and also, I want to say this real quick. We're going to be doing Fed Reacts once a week right now, guys, up until uh, mid-November or something like that. And uh, we'll be back to two episodes per week. But for now, we, I just want to really focus on Fresh to Fit, making sure the daytime, the, the Fresh Fit thing is good and the studio is all set and, and uh, set up 100%. Uh, but we'll still give you all Fed Reacts once a week on Sundays as usual. Um, and then also, we got a lot to talk about. We got Tupac. Uh, killer being arrested we got ynw melly case going crazy right now so um don't worry we got a bunch of hot fire content coming on fed reacts very soon and then also do me a favor guys like the video on youtube i think we got about a thousand plus y'all in here watching so thank you so much you could be anywhere else in the world but you're here with us and then also we got another couple thousand y'all watching over on rumble so um all right sorry was there a question for me here bills yes there's a bunch of them honestly all right let's uh, do it this one's uh from now i got my glass i'm not blind sorry uh, yo, Myron, I called in during a law enforcement show. Once I become a cop, should I still go the FHA round and get a treplex, or can I get a house so I can be isolated, or can I get a house uh, so I can be isolated? I'll also be taking the car home. What would you do? Okay, number one, my friend, um, make sure that you fill out an outside employment and or outside activity form for your police department first, okay? You want to make sure that nothing is seen as, you know, inappropriate, whatever it may be. So put that on the side just to be safe, okay? That's going to protect you. Uh, so, you know, because people, bro, here's the thing. People, once you g get on the job, right, you're going to be a rookie. You know, you're going to have a real estate property. You're going to be making money on the side. People might hate on you, talk some shit, blah, blah, blah. So make sure you have that filled out. Your chief knows about it, the chain of command, right? Hey, guys, you know, I'm going to be doing some real estate investing on the side as, while I'm a police officer. You want to do that, right? Okay, I tell you guys this whether you work when you work for the feds as well or if you work for the U.S. government, always fill out an outside employment and or outside activity type form just to protect you nine out of ten times is going to get approved okay especially if it's something like real estate which isn't gonna you know fuck you up that's number one number two um go the fha route and get the triplex um and um and live in it for a year uh just make sure that you live in it especially if you're going to be law enforcement because you can absolutely get hit with mortgage fraud if you don't and uh and just make it work for a year and then move out bro um yeah it's gonna suck because you're gonna have to deal with tenants and shit like that but you can hire uh, a property manager to help you out with that if you want. If you're going to be working on working and stuff like that, and you have time to you know deal with their bullshit, like just hire someone that uh, that is going to be you know that can basically be on call and deal with all the bullshit, and you can kind of outsource it. And you'll probably be making a good amount of money uh, working in law enforcement, so you can go ahead and absolutely have someone take care of that. Or you could buy your first house yourself, live in it, pay the mortgage off yourself, and then put a tenant in it after the fact. But a triplex or a duplex is going to help you offset that mortgage. That's why the FHA route was so good. Uh, mine is a single father to one girl. Should I put my hoe? Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. My hoe behind baby mama on child support. I haven't yet because I get the impression men shouldn't. If roles were reversed, she would cook me probably. SMH. Um, she cooking you for sure. Shit, do it. City boys, we up, baby. Um, city boys, we up, baby. Oh, God. <laughs> that's a personal question, bro. I can't answer you that for you. Um, if you don't need it and you don't want the headache, then that's up to you. But that's really a very personal question. So, um, you know, do you want to deal with the headache of, you know, taking her to court, you know, fighting her to get the payments, uh, dealing with any type of bullshit that might come? Or would you prefer the piece of you just handle it yourself? You take care of your daughter on your own. And, you know, it really comes down to you personally. Uh, I say run that shit up, bro. Go <laughs> yeah. Bro, she would have done the same shit to yeah, you, bro. You, I mean, if you want to look at it that way, you can do it, do it that way too. But it comes down to, you know, how much of a headache are you willing to endure? Because you best believe she's going to fight you. She's absolutely going to fight you. So are you prepared for that? That's what it comes down to. Um, uh, Myron, you watched the South Park episode on Michael? Uh, I did not see that episode. You didn't? No. 
It was, Alvin it was goes. Uh, that was during our time too. Yeah, I didn't. That's one episode I didn't see. I forgot. Mm. Or, or sorry, I just didn't see it. Uh, can you bring back the divorce attorneys to discuss rights and responsibilities for unmarried but cohabitating partners in California? This is called Marvin's Law, which is the equivalent to common law marriage for the unmarried. Uh, well, I mean, they could talk about it, guys, to a degree, but remember that they're licensed in Florida. Uh, when you when you're going over a Tupac case, make sure you watch a documentary called Murder Rap. You can watch it for free on YouTube. Okay. Um, Another supporter suggested having video in the girls' room to explain to them the rules of the pot. I think that's a great idea. Um, well, guys, um, that's on Locals. Uh, Icy gets it every single time, uh, and you guys can see the rules being explained to them. It's crazy to me because just so y'all know, the girls that come on the show, they're warned, what, two to three times? Two to three about times, the rules? at least. At least. Icy warns them on the way up from the elevator. Um, if Angie's here, she warns them. And then Chris warns them again right before the show, and then I warn them like a fourth or fifth time right before we go on. Facts. And I actually open it up for them for Q&A. Any questions, et cetera, for you guys? And I tell them, yo, my goal isn't to kick girls off the show. Like, it really isn't. Like, I only kick girls off for hurting the quality of the show. And I warned them about this shit before. And they still act crazy. So for some of you guys that say, yo, Byron, you Frank Castle girls, you asshole, blah, blah, blah. Like, bro, I wish y'all could see, like, the whole setup and what goes into bringing some of these girls on. And they still act crazy, bro. They still act fucking crazy. You know what I mean? You're my, and you're, you got red pill rage, blah, blah, blah. You'd have red pill rage too, motherfucker. If you explain to these dumb assholes the rules and regulations, they still act crazy and act rambunctious and disrespect you in your own fucking crib. You guys would have red pill rage too. The fuck out of here, man. <laughs> yeah, but just exercise stoicism. Shut the fuck up, man. A lot of y'all, man. No, just stoicism, bro. No one cares about, number one, stoicism is boring. And then number two, obviously exercising your emotions is a very important skill. But sometimes you got to let these hoes have it, man. So for real, sometimes y'all just gotta yo get the fuck out of here, man. Sometimes you gotta <laughs> let these bitches know what time it is, man. Um, that's well, why that's why a lot of girls who end up working for us behind the scenes end up hating women. Man, I, I, <laughs> man, I should bring Icy on one time as a guest and let y'all fucking hear from her how she she but she's the real misogynist. <laughs> <laughs> the girls that work for me, bro, almost always end up uh, like hating these bitches, man. Like they're like, yo, I fucking hate Misogyny. these girls. <laughs> no. Because especially when they like deal with them all the time, they're recruiting them, they're warning them in the elevator as they're coming up, they tell them again, hey, be respectful, hey, do this, hey, do that. They're dealing with them, they're fucking giving them drinks, etc. and these girls still act entitled and rude to them. They treat, they treat the girls that work for me terrible sometimes. That sounds like a money episode right there. What? Oh, have them talk about it? That sounds genius. That. That's you another thing too. That's some an idea. That's, say, a, that's some an idea. Will say like, "Oh, yo, Myron, you kicked that girl off. She didn't act that crazy." Y'all don't see it. Sometimes they'll disrespect the staff behind the scenes, and I'll have less patience. I'm like, "Get the fuck out of here!" You said some crazy shit to Icy earlier. Get the fuck out of here. Or you said some crazy shit to Chris. Or you disrespected one of the girls in the back. Like, I like, bro. Like, it's one thing if you're gonna be annoying to on the show to me or whatever. But I really get pissed off when they disrespect the staff. Like, disrespect the girls that work for me. Because I got, like, three girls, three or four girls that work for me behind the scenes. And I'm like, bro, like, I, they're dealing with these annoying ass hoes. And I'm just like, bro, don't fucking disrespect my staff, man. You know, y'all want to go ahead and get some clout and talk shit to Myron or I'm going to give Myron a piece of my mind. Whatever. But don't fucking disrespect my fucking staff, bro. Like, don't do that shit. That's, that's when it gets me pissed off. Especially when they disrespect the girls that work for me. So, because the other thing, too, is that... I don't want to be held responsible if one of my chicks swings on these bitches and beats them up. Like, bro, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, some of these girls, like, yo, some of these girls be, get, be coming close to getting beat up, bro. Well, one time wasn't that close, bro. They, yeah, one time they she, did get she fucked had, up. She actually ran up and, man. Uh, yeah, man. Like hey. that one girl. Like, she started it with Icy, bro. Like, like she got beat up and it's like, bro, you started it. You literally came at her and you, you expect the, whatever, man. Because I can't tell you how many times, like, Chris has broken up shit in the back or, or broken shit up or one of us has broken shit up when a girl, like, try to start one of start some shit with some of the girls that are on the staff. And I'm like, bro, I don't want the girls on my staff beating up a chick and getting in trouble. So, like, fuck that shit, man. <laughs> so, whatever, man. It is what it is. These chicks be disrespectful as fuck, man. Uh, Yo, the Shamuta one was crazy. Yeah, bro. That shit was crazy, bro. Uh, what else we got here? I thought we was going to get canceled on that episode because... Uh... <laughs> uh, mine is on a mission because that's the MO, right? MO, Cloud OKC. He means, of course. Uh, okay. And you? Uh, oh, let me zoom this in one second. I thought we were doing 10 and up. Or this, this came before. 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 Uh, Center Sundays, man, get your passport and only to vacation there to propose. If she don't sign prenup next day, just divorce without knowledge. Yeah, that's Dominican Republic, I think. Um, yeah, the most uncovered truth is that women are bad at everything. Um. How how uh, how much more um 
how much more relaxed a woman is, the the basically saying the quieter she is, the cuter she is. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. That's what we've been saying, right? And and, and wait, what and what do you say? This yeah. I, he, I he said this the hood, ain't it? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said this hey. the hood, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. okay. hey, w Big Mo Spanish. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We got what's up next? Oh, final solution by the Okay. Oh, on the Sims? Okay. I'm, All right. I'm we're lost. just going to go All back. Right. Uh, DJ Build, uh, W. Meyer for sharing knowledge. Found Tate, Tristan, and FNF like a year ago. Raw value. Shout out to Bills for quitting the weed and what you do with all the extra time now, bro. WFNF. Uh, Looks like Mexican and U.S. Um, emoji. Okay. Cool. Uh, what else do we got here? We got here, um, Carlos goes, hypocrite made an interesting video on the supposed... Uh, Okay. The beginning and end of the video features, they don't care about us. Oh, the, you know, the one with your favorite line. Okay, I see. <laughs> and then we got here, uh, Rumberroll goes, take a look at the lyrics, they don't care about us, MJ song and mentions. Okay, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, where are we at here with... Um, with the documentary? Yeah. Yeah, so we're back to the main documentary that we were watching. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and and the, one, the other one you sent us, that was like the whole thing. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me go back here. Now we're going to... So we covered the allegations uh, and how he was acquitted of it. Um, and then also, now we're going to cover... Let me... Hold on. Sorry, guys. Let me make sure I sent you this link. Ooh. We talked about Michael Jackson's passing. We're going to go ahead and cover the um, the doctor. Okay? The the, the death with um, the doctor. Um, okay. We're not going to watch this whole thing, but we're going to... We'll watch a portion of it. Uh, you got the link for this one more or no? No. I'll put it in right now. Because there's a bunch of conspiracy theories on this one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hold on. What page is that on? I just saw it. He said, we, that boy trying to say, <laughs> he said, what page you did that on? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I just want ah, you guys to know. Uh, I, want you guys. I know what you want. Ah, okay. You got it. Myron has the most complicated was, screen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah it's, uh, on, yeah, it's on the third page. Second. I, I have second. Like, oh, second. Yeah, I got like... um. Yeah, I got you got three, three pages. I got three pages of sound effects, guys. Okay. It is, it is, it is next <laughs> level, y'all. They're gifed out. They show exactly what I, yeah. I wish you guys knew how much he put into that soundboard. W Myron for this. Absolutely. You, 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 have, you, got, you, you have to know. My, I can't. Bro, I can't. Bro, yo, take, yo, yo I, I'm going to remove that one, bro. <laughs> yo, the, the, the last page on the bottom right, bro. I'm removing that one, bro. Uh, no, that one is funny. <laughs> no, it's not, bro. <laughs> that's, what, that's what got us in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> a certain song if y'all know what I'm saying oh my god DK <laughs> Donkey Kong <laughs> dog oh shit oh lord yep uh, alright where, where are we at here I'm pulling up the link right now okay Bingmo give a FNF super chat shout out oh well wanna be heard super chat here FNF super chat dot com the link is in the top pinned on the top of the live chat and I'm also going to copy and paste it into the Rumble chat. So, guys, make sure you guys want to be heard. And we're reading $10 and up. So, make and with, oh, while you're here, like the video, comment, share, subscribe. Yo, get these likes Hello. up on my soul, bro. <laughs> yeah, how many people we got watching right now on YouTube? We On YouTube, we got 1.1K waiting. Watching? Yep. Okay. With... 726 likes. Bro, 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 bro. bro. We need 1,000 likes at oh, least, God. guys. Come on, man. We need 1,000 likes. We're over here doing this demonetized video for y'all, man, which we appreciate the support. Um, guys, just like the video, okay? Subscribe to the channel. Let's hit 165K subscribers if we can tonight. That'd be lit. I think we're like 50 away. So if you're watching, you're not subscribed to the channel, man. Subscribe to the channel. Let's hit 165K subscribers tonight man and let's hit 1000 likes because it'll help with the engagement because we are shadow banned to hell right now on this channel uh because you know obviously channels are demonetized right they're gonna we got haters we got people that's Ugh. so yeah man like the video man let's hit 1000 likes and then we got how many uh, uh watching on rumble we have 1400 Okay. okay. So, yeah, we got the audience split, man. So, we got one thousand, a little 1,100 on YouTube and then another 1,400 or so on, uh, wait, is 11 or 1,200? Sorry. 14. 1,400. 1,400 y'all over on Rumble. on uh, Rumble, man. So, guys, like the video, man. Okay, if you guys are watching on Rumble, I'd really appreciate it if you opened up a tab. Like that on YouTube because, as you guys know, YouTube is the discovery app, but Rumble is the superior app. So, 
Uh, like the video, man. Support on Rumble, man, and YouTube. Uh, and 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 shout out to the mods. I see y'all in the chat promoting. Y'all been promoting the, the stream labs. Y'all been promoting the FNF super chat, and y'all was promoting Castle Club. So big ups to you guys. I see you guys in the chat. And like I said, everyone else, like the video, comment, share, subscribe. Okay, and then let's go back to the uh, original documentary, the first one that we had. Mm -hmm. Play that one from forty thirty eight. Forty thirty eight. Yeah, from forty thirty eight. Wait, I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna play that one, and then I think that'll lead up to the. We kind of did start. We did. We, we did. did we already did. Yeah. yeah, we started at like forty fifteen. Yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All I'm right, going then. backwards. Yeah. Okay. 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 So then let's go to the doc one. Then my bad. The new one got you. And we'll play a portion. We're gonna play the whole thing, guys. Okay. And welcome to the Doc Exchange, a real stories podcast in partnership with the Grierson Trust. Every week, pause, I'll pause, ask pause. a new filmmaker or film. I hope we don't get hit with a copyright on this one. <laughs> if we do, then it's going to be Rumble only, guys. Just so y'all know. Uh, okay, fast forward a little bit. Fast forward a bit. Yeah, because this thing is long. All right, all right. Yeah, uh, go back, go back a bit. Then we'll give some commentary. We're not going to play the whole thing. We're going to just play a portion. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, play there. Before we were notified. And in fact, later, when you're reflecting on this call, the days, the weeks, the months afterwards, one of the greatest regrets that all of us had was that we had not been called sooner. When we came outside, that's when we became aware of a very large presence. We were trying to back out on the street only to be hindered by many, many cameramen putting their lenses against the glass windows of the moving ambulance. People seem to forget or don't realize about this investigation. It was a death investigation. It really wasn't a crime um, at the time. From the information that I had, it was probably an accident or natural. And we would find out that he had some pre-existing medical condition. And then we would be done. Pause. Just look at what we knew. I, I ain't gonna lie, man. The fact that they had three detectives assigned to this is crazy, bro. Uh, you know, for a death. So um, definitely, you know, assigning some pretty significant resources to, you know, to the case. Bills, you good, man? We got a good camera set up, bro. They won't see you. Nah, they won't see you, man. You good? Uh, yeah, Bills uh, didn't want to be seen in the background. Hey, bro, you good, man? We got the. Yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, anyway, yeah, for them to give it three detectives, I'm, I mean, that, that's, uh, that's, I, I would argue that's a bit of overkill. But, um, but hey, that goes to show uh, that you know, obviously they. Uh, <laughs> They had to, you know, cross every T and dot every I, especially with, um, you know, how they had kind of messed up with their whole L as far as um, trying to prosecute him 10 years prior, pro roughly, for the uh, the sexual assault charges or sexual misconduct charges. But, yeah, three detectives for a death. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> especially, but, hey, that, that also made them think potentially, hey, there might have been some nefarious reasons why he died. Was this, was this you know, was this... Um, you know, intentional was this, uh, you know, was this, um, what's the word I want to use here? Foul play. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so I could see why, uh, the city of Los Angeles would do this. All right, let's go. Let's go back to it. You in the first hours of this taken to the hospital, there wasn't a bloody knife. There wasn't a smoking gun. There was nothing on the surface that would lead anyone to believe anything nefarious had occurred. When I arrived at the hospital, Dr. Murray was gone. So he was no longer there Pause. at the scene. Damn, robbery homicide division took this. Okay. All right. So I guess they were bringing in the big guns. <laughs> they were bringing in the big boys. Oh, shit. Let's see. We're a bit of a panic then. Uh, the one person that was in a room with them at the time that everything happened is no longer at the hospital. There were several attempts right away to get a hold of Dr. Murray. Uh, that were negative, that he, they were going to voicemail. <laughs> yeah, family members. Yeah, you, family. Already know, you already know what time it is with him, man. He was like, uh, yeah, um, I'm not talking to none of y'all. I'm gone. I'm go-to. Because uh, he probably knew 
uh, since Mike was under his care and Mike passed away, that he would be the first person that would be questioned by law enforcement. So he probably had himself ready to go with lawyers immediately, or at least that would be the smart thing to do. Let's see what ends up happening. Members coming in and people wanting some questions answered as well as us. It is believed he suffered cardiac arrest in his home. A team of doctors, including emergency physicians and cardiologists, attempted to resuscitate him. The emergency room physician, they believed it was a heart attack, partly because of what Mr. Murray had told them. Never told them anything about any other narcotics or anything. They just believed he had had a heart attack and stopped breathing. Pause. And if you guys watched the uh, first episode uh, that we did, uh, Michael did have a bunch of um, health ailments. Uh, he had uh, Crohn's disease, if I'm not mistaken. Lupus he had too, right? The lupus, um, the vent ventiligo, v the vitiligo, 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 which uh, with with the skin. Um, you know, he uh, had malnourishment issues. He wasn't. He would eat like very infrequently. Um, he just wasn't he wasn't necessarily uh at the top of his health guys uh, which is which is kind of sad you know you would think someone like him who's you know an international superstar all the money in the world he'd have you know access to like a good trainer uh, uh you know obviously a, a team of chefs that would prepare healthy meals like it, it's just sad you know what i mean especially when you have pre-existing health situations like this man you got you got to take care of yourself man you got to be in the gym you got to be eating well you got to be getting those micronutrients in and getting the high protein diet in um i know michael was a vegetarian but yo you could still absolutely eat very healthy with a vegetarian diet like you know uh but let's keep going so detectives head to neverland range so here we are at the Carrollwood House. That day, by the time I got here, we had to block off this side of the street, the entrance side of the street, and it was full of media vans. We had never seen anything like this. I had Pause. never seen anything like it. I remember, guys, when this happened, like, this was all over the news when uh, when this first went down. Before he passed away, because people kind of saw that this was this might be coming when he went to, when he was rushed to the hospital. So it was a media frenzy, man. It was crazy. It was all over. It was all over the news. I mean, this is what, 2009? So, yes. you know, again, prior to social media, guys, the news was pretty much the only way that you would get any type of updates on what's going on, right? It was before the era of... You are fake news. So... The media was the the mainstream media was your only news outlet back then, right? And but thank God for independent media because now we know that the news be lying all over the place about a bunch of different stuff. So um, yeah, let's go back to it. There was the room where Dr. Murray treated Mr. Jackson. And then there was a locked room, which was uh, Mr. Jackson's bedroom. There's a fireplace in the room and it was roaring. So the room was very, very hot. There were like post-it note or pieces of paper taped uh, all over the room Pause. on mirrors. On Love no violence ever. What else does that say? I am so what grateful that I am a magnet for miracles. Weird. What? You spelled grateful wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Who wrote that? Interesting. Huh. huh. All right. Doors with little slogans or phrases. I don't know if they were lyrics or thoughts or, or some of them seemed like poems. The bedroom was, it was a mess. In the room where he was being treated, 
it did not seem like a room fit for any type of medical treatment. Not even like a, a home makeshift medical suite. It was just bare bones. I just remember going in there and there's an IV stand and a saline bag and just various medications strewn about. Hmm, pause. Very, very strange. Um, and, and you would, I mean, I get it. You're a celebrity. So like, you know, going to the, you know, to a traditional hospital might not be in your best interest as an international celeb, but it's like, God damn, like, uh, you couldn't come up with like a bit more of a, a better medical setup, man, especially for someone that has a goddamn giraffes and animals all over the place. Like, bro, you got you like, what's going on here, man? Well, remember he, when he died, he was in incredible depth. Oh mm. yeah, he probably he probably really felt like he couldn't afford it. Damn, yeah, you're right. Actually, can, can you guys? Because uh, we we didn't get to talk about that real quick. Where did the money end up? Where did he lose all his money? It was around the time. I think it was around the time when he bought like Never Neverland Ranch or something like that. Yeah, but like, what dragged him into 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 debt? We didn't get to talk about how he had like uh, uh, uh you know amassed this enormous amount of debt and how he ended up like losing so much of his money. Big Mo looking it up. Mo, Mo, Mo's uh, researching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead, Bills. Yeah, uh, I, honestly, I just think that um, he had horrible spending habits. You know, when you're when you're a touring artist going across the world, mm. it is super expensive. And you know, Myron, you you preach living uh, below your means yeah. all the time. Yeah, that is something that a lot of artists, especially when you hit superstardom, have a really pro have a really big problem doing. Um, like you said, he couldn't even go to the hospital. So imagine him having to pay for a private doctor to come to his house and imagine him spending he's he's vegan, vegetarian, you know, he's eating he was eating when he was eating, he was eating probably expensive private dinners by personal chefs or private chefs. So it all comes down to like, you know, really budgeting and and the home played a big finances. part. The, the and home, you know, the home in the land played a big part. And and where in Atlanta? The land. Oh, the land. I, I will tell y'all this. Um now that I think about it, when you when you reach that level of fame and you have that much money, a lot of times what ends up happening is like you don't even run your life. Like there's someone that pays your bills for you. There's someone that has access to all your bank accounts. There's someone that like handles all your stuff for you, right? Like an account manager or whatever. And that's why a lot of these celebs, like NBA players or NFL players or whatever, they end up uh, either A, never understanding you know financial literacy because someone handles it for them or they lose all their money because someone backstabbed them and steals their money. Um, and someone like Michael Jackson, I wouldn't be surprised if like he just focused on touring, he just focused on make, on, on on performing, etc. And he had someone else like handle all that stuff. Someone to pay the to, to pay the bills, someone to pay the mortgage, someone to pay um, handle the animals, all that stuff. And and yeah, after a while, if you don't have financial literacy, you're not going to know how to deal with that stuff. And you know, the guy was a mus musician his entire life, he was a performer his entire life, so. He probably was never taught and or learned any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. He's spelling, right? he spelling grateful, G-R-E-A-T. Of course he don't know financial literacy. Ah. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, and, but yeah. He said Michael's main problem was that his income dwindled in recent years. He never changed his spending habits. In 2005, uh, foren a forensic accountant testified that. Michael was spending twenty to thirty million more per year than he earned. Oh See? sh! And what? was in debt by as much as two hundred eighty-five million. Damn! I'm telling you, them spending habits, yo. If you're an artist, get three accountants. <laughs> Damn! I mean, Bills, you you've worked with a lot of artists in the past when you did a, a you know audio engineering and stuff like that. Would you say that's like the biggest thing that messes them up is that they never learn the financial literacy and they get they make too much money too quickly? Man, yes, Myron. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's horrible. Um, like I said, a lot of these record label contracts are just loans. You know, just to put it real simple, like a really bad business loan. Honestly, with horrible interest rates. Yep. <laughs> and and a lot of these artists don't even make the money back, or they spend it the moment they get it. They get a quick advance of a five hundred. Can you explain 000. what an advance is and like kind of like because a lot of people might not necessarily understand how the music industry works or how this goes. So can you explain that to them? Real absolutely, quick? absolutely. I have no problem with that. So in the music industry, when you sign a record label contract, let's just say hypothetically, a record label is going to sign me for a million dollars today. They're going to give that to you 
in an advance pretty much saying that you get the money up front but in contingency you have to make a, a million dollars in sales and profit that does not include your studio recordings that does not mean um the marketing there's still that still comes all out of the budget so first thing first everyone knows when you get a million dollars in the record label it's really probably about three hundred thousand dollars for real you got to pay half to uncle sam because you're in the entertainment industry and you're doing a million dollars you know the million dollar tax percentage in the in america so that's the first thing they're taking five hundred thousand off that then you got to pay 20 percent to your managers that's that you know it, it all comes down to when people say like you're getting a million dollar a million dollar advance you're you're <laughs> it, hey you're really getting like 150,000 probably like 300 they, 300 Once everyone is paid off yeah honestly 100 percent. but the good news is if you're a good artist um you'll probably make that money back quick if you're a hard-working diligent artist you're staying good on your budget um you're not doing crazy studio sessions a lot of the times the studio budget and the wardrobe budget is killing killing the artist if you get an artist that wardrobe budget what yo they the and if <laughs> Sometimes there, there's a famous story, I believe, like Trinidad James. I seen him oh. post on, on Instagram. Big Mo, you know, you know about the story that I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah, go ahead. But yeah, so Trinidad James, I believe for all gold, everything video, the remix, if he didn't, he had two chains and TI in the video or something like that. Yeah. I believe they, like, the label said that the wardrobe for TI and two chains was like $50,000 or something like that. And then in the video, you see TI wearing his Grand Hustle merch, like the merch that he has. And like Jeezy wearing like or, or like uh, two chains wearing something simple like the but the wardrobe wasn't even what it is like so there's just a lot of things with the with the what budget. What the hell? Why they charge him fifty k then? Bro, d bro, come on, you know you. Uh, Damn. There, the art, the features was making money on the back end is pretty much what they're saying. Like, oh yeah, you know we're on this remix. Um, yeah, shout out to Cha-Ching. and you know it's just like it's bad business, honestly. The honestly. Whoever, if it's either two chain side or TI side, one of them charged way more for the wardrobe. Oh, okay, because 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 the, 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 the feature artists were able to dictate the wardrobe thing budget at least, oh, and, yeah. and and okay, still okay. and still wear their own merch oh, okay, during the okay. video. So imagine so they pocketed some money. Bingo. They they they, bingo. they they looked at it like, oh, we're gonna get some more off you because they already probably paid for the feature anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so you're telling me the featured artists are able to dictate. A, a wardrobe budget for themselves absolutely if you're saying yo i need you in my music video and i'm like all right i need a new fit for my music video especially because you know i'm a big suit big artist gotcha you know i i gotta get a twenty thousand dollar outfit i need the louis vuitton whatever and whatever the mary jeans whatever people rocking nowadays and yeah it, it'll come out their pocket and it'll come out oh. the artist's pocket the main artist and then the features will eat it up it's just a lot of um honestly just a lot of bad business in the music industry just make sure you keep the right people around honestly it's just one that's just one example of how bad you know the budgets can be messed up in the in the music industry for real and that's why this is free game if you're in the music industry make sure you guys are doing your audits for real do the audits do the audits that is super important the first offer is always going to be a horrible offer that they're going to want to screw you over and give you the highest interest <laughs> rate possible <laughs> So, so, so when they give you an advance, it's essentially a loan with mm -hmm. an interest rate. Yes. yes. And you better pay it back. You better pay it back. <laughs> and if you don't pay it back, your album is shelved and you're in debt for the rest of your life and you better and shoot. Good luck. <laughs> you so, better. That, so that advance is essentially just so that you can like kind of start living a bit. Like it's like it's it's yeah. it's, it's, it's it's hey, we're going to give you this money up front. You better make us back this money. Mm -hmm. And and if you can't do it on the first album, well, we're gonna charge you interest until you do. Yes, absolutely. Damn. Uh, but it's it's also where I hold the artist's feet to the fire because very few artists actually put their money in the right way. And I think the only other example that I've seen when an artist actually used the money the right way is actually Tory Lanez. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so there's not a lot of yeah. artists that do that the the right way. Honestly, there's not a lot. Gotcha. The first thing they do is even Future had talked about it like. Um, that he was spending so much of his the loan money on jewelry, he didn't spend it on actually building equipments, or he didn't spend it on the promotion or the marketing, or the budget for the touring. It was just jewelry. I mean, Bruh. Future ended up making so much in his concerts that he kind of can to offset it. He kind of, kind of, although he would have probably been had like triple. I I actually argue tri triple to quadruple if he didn't spend his money stupidly. Mm. Yeah, he'd be tricking on girls, too. That's another mm -hmm. L, bro. Mm -hmm. God damn, man. Yeah. The advances is, 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 
really to help you see, he admitted it to Kevin yeah. Samuels in his fucking video if y'all remember yeah. Ooh, that boy was a big oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So how much yeah. he spent he spends on chicks like like what, what do you say like a couple million or some yeah. shit yeah god damn and then they show up on the show and think that they're special bro god damn god man. damn oh sorry you were saying uh bills yeah the advance is for you to be able to record your album and make money and do your do whatever you do to to get the music out just get the music out they mm. just want you to get the music out but then rappers usually just go straight to icebox or whatever jeweler the eliante or whatever yeah. jeweler that they go to nowadays and you know <laughs> they blow the racks but i do want to say something though yeah go ahead if you do have a good accountant you know jewelry as a rapper is tax deductible so don't think that they're all just losing the money nowadays at least if yeah they it's have one a of the few accountant. times that you could probably get it written off 100 like, percent. it's it's a business expense yeah you know, especially you could, for a musician. you write it off under um under uh costume exactly under costume is how, you would, is how you would do it but yeah it's very it's difficult to do i think as a rapper it's probably the only it's probably the only profession that you could write off a chain bro yeah 100 percent. realistically 100%. speaking because the other thing too is that you need to show that you don't use it every day it's, mm. it's, it's like literally a part of your cost it's a costume expense mm -hmm. so uh yeah i don't think said a I, 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 I agree it is a clown costume facts bro <laughs> <laughs> But I'll, although I don't believe most artists be actually be writing them writing those chains off, Pro probably not. Now, they that don't got is an another take. They don't. They don't write yeah. those chains off. Yeah, not not every artist got a good accountant, and that's why I say every musician, if you're especially signed, should have three accountants, and they all should be watching over each other's. Uh, you know, they should be watching over each other. That's uh, just checks funny. and balances. Exactly. Like, okay, looking at each other's work and shit. Exactly. Yeah. Because and they don't even know about each other? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're hitting it on the head. You I know, like that. exactly. That's I like only, that. That's what you should do. Free game. Damn. There you go. Uh, what else do we got here? Back oh, to back it. to the video. They said, can't spell jewelry without. <laughs> <laughs> I see what y'all said. <laughs> Let's keep going. There was a computer on the bed. There was a lifelike uh, doll on the bed and it's kind of like advertisements of uh, pictures with babies. What the hell? Everybody knew about the allegations oh, that the had been leveled against Mr. Jackson over the years. One of the things when I saw the laptop on the bed, do I go into it? But you have to realize the type of case I was investigating. Uh, when you get you know, hold of an investigation, you have to kind of whittle out what is and what isn't. It's like with any case, um, you don't allow whatever the victim was uh, into pause. prior. To uh, hmm, interesting. Ah, I yeah. see. Yeah, I think uh, I saw. we got hit with, uh, yeah. we're in Shadow Realm on YouTube. Yeah. That's cool. Turn it off real quick. I'm Not turn it off. Uh, switch back. All right. So for all the YouTube ninjas, I know y'all are probably going crazy right now saying L YouTube or whatever. Butch, I predicted this would happen. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to obviously shift this thing over to Rumble here in a second. But we'll wait until the YouTube stream comes back up. Uh, we were doing good for a while, too. Yeah, it's all good. I, I knew that this might potentially happen. So I guess this is time here very soon to switch on over to Rumble Jet Ninjas. Let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> but yeah, um, it'll be back on YouTube uh, here up in a second. They just need a second to... Um, it's interesting because what they'll do is they'll suspend your stream. And then uh, when you play it back, right, after like, you know, a couple hours, it'll show it on, it'll show it on, uh, on YouTube as well. So that's cool. No worries, guys. Come on over to Rumble, rumble.com slash FedReacts. Um, link is going to be put uh, in the uh, it is in the chat. I see that they're spamming it right now. So come on over. <laughs> Niggas are saying them, boys. Uh, Let me know when to cut them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll kill the YouTube stream here in a little bit. I just want to make sure that we're back up live and everything else like that. And then we can go ahead and make the proper announcement and everything else like that. But... Um, I mean, well, you know, might as well get your thoughts on this. What are your, what are your thoughts on this, guys, with this doctor and everything else like that? Do you guys think uh, he uh, it was legit? He passed away, or you guys think the lawyer had was involved in it? What do y'all think? Not lawyer, not lawyer. The doctor. Do you? Because there's so many conspiracy theories on this. My base take. Yeah. Yeah. My my base take is that uh, dang it, big mo, big mo, press the button. That's my base take. That uh, is that's all I gotta say. Is, oh uh, shit! Because remember, if you don't know, 
he owned half of Sony Music because he was making so much money for Sony that he owned half of Sony at one point in his career, and then he sold the rights back to them. Michael Jackson was making a lot of money with his royalties. Wait, that, so he owned half of Sony? Yes, bro. Yes, he that, owned that 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 Beatles royalty. That Beatles royalty was huge. It mm, was huge. So would y'all say that's the because you know I've heard I've heard these conspiracy theories. He pissed for, off he for pissed years that like oh his doctor killed him and all this other stuff and in my head I'm like why like what like okay he he pissed off a lot of higher ups and a lot of gods you know when he bought that Beatles catalog. Like what what like because obviously we don't we 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 can see here that Mike wasn't necessarily the most financially astute guys. Why what prompted him to buy the Beatles catalog? He did, did he have an advisor? Did he just know? Was he like, uh, does and, he love the music? Like, what What got him to do it? I know according to Eddie Griffin, the comedian Eddie Griffin, he's, yeah. he's, he said he was next to Michael when it happened, uh-huh. and Michael did it just because. Mm. Okay. You know, he say, hey. He, so he just did it just because? Yeah, like, he really did it just to flex next to Eddie Griffin. Okay. Um, YouTube is back. Yeah, YouTube is back. What about you, Bills? Uh, yeah, man, definitely. Uh, one hundred percent. Uh, the industry took him out, in my opinion. That's just my. That's just my personal. Because belief. because he just just because he had a large. So it was two things: him having uh the Beatles catalog, and then him owning half of Sony. You're saying? Yes. Did he, he actually own half of it? Or are you saying it, like? Oh, it was, cut, it was, was making half the revenue. It, it, it was because of that Beatles catalog. You know, that's he, why that he was making yeah fifty percent of the revenue. Yeah. I actually, I think that he was making 50% of the revenue just off of his songs. Like, for real, for real. If I could give y'all, I'll look up the years exactly. Um, Did he have he, his masters he, at that point? N- no. I, I do not believe so, no. Okay. No. Okay. So, damn. So y'all think it was it was a planned hit because he was making so much goddamn money? I think he does. I'm, okay. What do you think? I, <laughs> I think it's a little culmination of the bad practice. Because I... I'm not much of a. <laughs> yeah, no, like qu- I don't know enough to comment, yeah. so I'm asking y'all. You guys, yeah, the music yeah. industry guys. Um, yeah, me. I'm just thinking that it was like between back practice and, you know, the health issues, the prior health issues he had. You know, like if it was know. just a bad practice, he probably would have just been in the hospital. But I think he would have still gotten out the hospitals. He would still been alive. If he didn't have the prior health issues. All right, so you think it, he. He don't think he was murdered. No. No. Okay. Mm-mm. But you could see why people would want him dead. Yes. Who else wanted him dead, bro? Because I didn't know about this Beatles catalog until y'all mentioned it last time. You only need one type. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So guys, we're gonna go ahead and kill the YouTube stream here. Uh, we're gonna continue on with the documentary, but as y'all know, we can't play it on uh, on the YouTubes. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and kill the YouTube stream. Right around here. Uh, Bills, let me know when we're clear. uh, One second. Killing it now. Come on over to Rumble, guys. Rumble.com slash FedReacts.